YouTube, it's Brian Phillips, excited to bring you something special today, the Pilatus PC21. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Just every little scale detail on here. I'm super excited to see it. Look at those beautiful flaps. And before we even get started, retracts. They look gorgeous. We finally have some halfway decent weather, but it's still not calm. So we're hoping that we get good. We get a good flight experience here. So we're gonna do a little taxiing. We're gonna fly this on 4S 3200. Look how beautiful that is. Man, that is just gorgeous. I love the little squat wheels on it. This that is only 1100 good. millimeters. The wind is gonna be going down the strip. I think this thing is gonna have plenty of power to get off the ground, no problem. So I'm not gonna back taxi too much. But let's go ahead and try this out. Here we go. Without further ado. Oh yeah. Very good, very good. We've got the AR630, or excuse me, the 631. Got a little bit of trimming here. Sorry, getting my aileron trim figured out here. That thing flies fast, wow. So far, so good. That's no throttle, by the way. That's full throttle. So far, I'd say it's flying really good. I would say that the CG is probably about right. Okay, let's go up to the corner there, camera crew. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna try to bring it in for a slow pass. There's takeoff flap deployment. Here comes the landing flap deployment. Ooh, we got our, we got our mix is perfect on the elevator. Elevator correction. I feel like I got a little bit too much, a uh, little bit too much going on for the gains on the rudder. Man, that sun is so bright right now. Let's try to go over here on the bowl. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. The camera crew is feeling great today, so we're lucky to have her, like always. Problem is there's a lot of turbulence. Let's go over to the vampire killing zone there. Oh, that thing looks so stinking gorgeous. I love the way it flies. It's real easy to fly. It's surprisingly easy to fly. Looks really good. The elevator is a little bit crazy, but it's just rock solid with this AS3X. I haven't even had to bat an eyelash and it's definitely not calm right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go, right down the runway, sorry. And straight up and roll. That's max roll rate. The elevator is just crazy loads of authority. Sorry, camera crew. Oh my God. Love the way it's flying though. Let's see if we could do a touch and go maybe. Okay. Take off flaps coming down. We're gonna leave the gear up. Okay, coming down to the vampire killing zone. Here goes the retracts. Forcing the nose down. A little bit of throttle to keep it powered. Might be a dirty pass. Okay, out of the flaps, out of the gear. Couple clicks of elevator trim there. Not elevator correction, elevator trim. Just love the way it looks. It's such a cool looking plane. It's just weirdly easy to fly. I don't know if that's the 637 that we need to attribute to being so good. Okay, we'll do a big roll up here where we can really enjoy it. And you remember how I thought it was like noisy when we first throttled it up? Mm -hmm. It's not noisy. And I'm like 0% throttle passes, like no throttle. Here's 10%. I don't know if you guys could see that snow berm, but that snow berm was encroaching on my flying area. <laughs> Good thing you weren't doing this two days ago. It was about twice as tall. Yep. Full landing flaps. We'll do a clean pass. Well, it's not clean because of the flaps, but we'll do just a slow pass. A little bit of wind coming over our shoulders. Man, that looks good. Let's go under the power lines here. Okay, out of flaps, full throttle. We're going to get in some speed and then go up and over and back down the runway. You doing good, camera crew? Yep. Full speed pass. 
Man, that is gorgeous. Up over the moon, pulling it sharp, and then flying it down. You guys notice I gave it throttle on the downhill, which is generally not necessary, but I knew I was gonna be pulling up right away, and I didn't want to high-speed stall that thing. Into the backyard. The kids were sledding back there today. Man, this thing is just so easy to fly. Full speed pass here coming. Presentation. Going up over the sun here, camera crew, and then back over the top of the power lines into the bowl. Full landing flaps coming out. Oh, that looks so gorgeous. Just looks really stable. It is. In combination with a little bit of skill and a little bit of absence of wind. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try a landing here because that's our alarm. You good? Yep. Okay. Going over here where we get a little bit of extra nose wind. Okay, you good? You ready to protect yourself? Yep. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Guys, I really, 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 really like the way that that went. And you know what? I'm not shivering either. Can I turn it around? That's the best. Oh, uh, not quite. Okay, not so we'll quite. throttle cut it. I'll come right back with the plane. Hey, get the battery thing out. Try not to talk until I get closer because we usually get our range about here. We should be this okay. thing taxis pretty good too. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Just loving the way it flies. You know what I need to do though, camera crew? What? I need to go ahead and set up a mix. Okay, throttle cuts on and tested. We're at one minute 25 on our timer. So first thing I'm gonna do is jump into the board programming. Okay, gyro settings, AS3X settings. Okay, so I'm happy with all that. Fixed adjustable gains. Okay, so where do I set that? I forget. Priority. Okay, that's fine. Heading. I don't see where the gain is set. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's not in this menu. So we'll go back. F mode setup. AS3X is active. System setup. Gain channel select, we already did all that. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly where to set it. I know we can go from high to middle to low, mm -hmm. or to nothing, rather. So let's look at the other thing I wanted to look at. Board programming. Did I already do the gyro settings? There's also the other settings. No, it's gotta range, be in gyro five. settings. Yeah, it's definitely in gyro settings. I'm just having a hard time reading that menu myself today. Oh, really? The S3X gains, this is where it should be. Oh, there we go. Yaw. So I'm gonna just turn that down to like 45, okay? So now that should be uh, correcting the overcorrection on the yaw axis. Also, I wanted to uh, look at my expo rates. I'm gonna go a little bit more expo. Can you see better there? I feel like everything is pretty good on that. Elevator could use just a touch more. We'll do like 25% on that. Otherwise we're good. Okay, so let's check the battery. If this has a little more juice in it, we'll keep flying, but I'm kind of guessing it's not going to. So let's pop this off. I love the striking colors. The red looks gorgeous up against mm -hmm. the sky. The bright sun, of course, doesn't really do us any favors for filming. But we're gonna try to do two flights because it's cool. Or excuse, it's cool. It's not insanely cold like it was the last few weeks. Okay, so we're gonna plop this in. This XBC 100 is a must have. Look at that, 51%. Are you kidding me? Nice. We're going up again for, we're gonna go up for a short circuit. Um, camera crew, will you hold that for me? <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and reset. We'll reset the timer because if we have 51% left, we should be totally fine and I'll just respect the timer this time. So you wanna pause? Yeah. I'm gonna put it at the end of the runway. Okay. Okay guys, so we've got the uh, throttle cut off. Takeoff flaps engaged. Timer is cleared. It says five minutes, but we'll go to like maybe four. Okay. Full throttle. Beautiful. A little bit of yaw. 
A little bit of yaw correction there. I don't know if that's just wind or if it was a AS3X issue. I doubt it. Wind kind of kicked up a little bit. Oh, that's so gorgeous. Guys, this plane flies great. It really does. It's not only is it beautiful, but it flies really good. Sorry, camera crew. Coming back down the runway, you good? Yeah. <laughs> Man, I caught the wind just at the weirdest time there. I don't know if you guys can see, this thing is getting buffeted around, but we're not having any issues with the yaw now, which is pretty awesome. If you guys stick around for the build series, I have to apologize in advance. We had a little bit of a gaff on location for the uh, receiver on this one. So if you watch to the end, you can see kind of how we worked it all out. Full landing flaps coming out here. Remember, five minute flight timer. We're doing really good on flight time so far. Take off flaps there, out of the flaps all together. Boy, you see it's really wind veining on that pass. I feel like the elevator is very powerful on this plane. You can just make that thing do what you want right now, which is maybe not super duper scale looking. So I'm trying to refine that a little bit. I love that angle where it goes from shadow to red. Normally don't fly behind the house like this, but it's just the way that looks up against the blue is just absolutely gorgeous over the moon. You'll see it about right now, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. High speed pass, you good? Yep. So it's not maybe the fastest plane, but it sure looks fast. Mm -hmm. And I love the way it looks in general. And it's flying really good, actually. Not unlimited vertical on 4S, I can tell you that for sure. It's, um. definitely not lacking in power it's definitely i would say not lacking in any control surface i feel like we could actually do a little bit less control authority on some of the channels in general and we would uh we would have every bit as good a flying plane so let's try taking a landing here we're about two minutes ten two minutes ten out from our timer our five minute timer which is actually more like about a an 11 minute timer that's taking out some of my chatter time. Keeping the throttle, kind of wind veining it here. We'll just do a dirty pass because I didn't like that. See how much it's getting buffeted there, guys? Up over the top of the sun. Feels like it's taking a while to spool up, so I would say we're probably running on borrowed time here. Take off flaps coming out, gear coming out. And here come our landing flaps. We're gonna stay in the power. We're gonna go down to the vampire killing zone just beyond. We're just gonna relax into it and just point it right at us, which is a little disconcerting. There we go, guys. Nice three-wheel landing. I would have liked to get a little more flare in there, but to be honest with you folks, I'll take it. It didn't this, bounce. Well, there's probably a little bit of a bounce. The first one was more bouncy. Yeah. So let's see if I can turn this around. It's very good on ground handling. Let's take those flaps up. Okay, so, oh, dang it. Oh, in the mud. Oh, in the mud. I'll go grab it. I'll be right back. This plane just really flies nicely. I'm quite surprised how well it flies. I figured with that short wing, it would want to be super hard to control, almost 3D style. There's our mm. five minute timer just now that just went off, guys. I don't know if you can see that on the timer screen. Mm -hmm. So here's one other thing I want to do. I want to go in here, and some of you guys are going to cringe when you see this. Either on to rudder. Whoops. Yeah, I want to turn that on. Why does it have the dashes? Aileron to rudder on curve eight. I don't know what that is. 
let's just turn it on you know what there must be something about forward programming that prevents that can you just set a straight new mix yeah i could that's a good idea normal thank you good idea either on to rudder let's just set the rate to like 10 percent and 10 percent okay so let's see what this this is just on there's no switch attached yep it's working okay cool so we'll see how that does uh when we come back on the second battery but let's go ahead and check the power i'm guessing we're probably pretty well spent now um yeah it was about as uneventful as you can get for a maiden i mean other than the fact that it's just absolutely gorgeous and the pilot is super detailed i really like this plane we did run into issues like i said where we mounted our receiver but then we were able to correct it without too much trouble and you can see where we have this battery it's way up here mm -hmm. guys way up here so that was very strange um both the camera crew and i were both weirded out by that but um, it, I mean, it flew good, so it flew good. So we must have had it right. Yeah. So whatever the CG marks are, and plus the wheels are way up here on this plane. So the way that it rolls and everything was just exactly the way I wanted it to. Okay, so we are at 25, 23 percent. We've got 24 percent. Wow. So yeah. 7.6. So that's about perfect. So I would say that conservatively on a 3200 4S Smart Pack, this is a Gen One, by the way. So if you get a Gen Two, you might even be able to squeeze a little extra out of it. Um, this is a 30 c pack too i would say that an eight nine minute flight would not be out of the question at all uh so what we're going to do is we're actually going to bust out another weird size that we almost never use it's a mm -hmm. 4s 2700 i felt like this plane was a little bit heavy on its feet and i feel like it might actually do a little bit better you'll notice that when i was trying to get my unlimited vertical um it, it was certainly wasn't and i don't think this is going to be the ticket to give us unlimited vertical but when a plane is a little bit lighter, it's surprising how big of an impact you can have. So let's take a look at how this goes in here. We are gonna get it to the CG marks. We got our marks here and here. I think that's like 90 and 95, but you'll have to watch the build video if you really wanna know where those go. And the battery range on this was 22, 22 to 33. 22 to 33, yeah. So that's just what we had that was yeah. within range. We didn't have those middle sizes, so we just went with, I'm just guessing where this is gonna go. I have not marked it yet. Mm -mm. Um, good straps, by the way, and they're both free, so you can actually spin them. That is a huge factor in my book. I love that you can spin them. If you can't spin them, you might as well not put them in as far as I'm concerned. So we checked the throttle cut when we were getting done with our last flight. Nice big cavernous opening here. Let's see if we got it. I think we might have it already. Very good clip. Haven't had a problem with it yet. Mm -hmm. We'll check the CG with the gear down this time. The nose gear does go forward. I would say that's, um, it needs to pull forward a little bit yet. Yeah. So that's what you're gonna find out real quick when you get this plane, is that because of the nature of the, the plane's design, you really gotta ride that forward. So I'm just gonna put it essentially right where the other one was. And I bet it's gonna be about right. You don't want a plane to fly tail heavy Okay, yeah, that should work. So I wanna do some back taxiing on this too. And I think I wanna, I think I'm gonna leave the timer at five minutes. Okay. We'll go ahead and get that set. Okay, so what have we changed? Virtually nothing. We added the 10% uh, rudder to aileron. It's actually aileron to rudder mix. Mm -hmm. And then we added, what else did we add? We changed the expo on the elevator. It does seem to be calming down a little bit, which is great. Yeah. Grass ops with this plane, probably not the best maneuver you could come up with unless you have very short manicured grass. Take off flaps, here we go. Sorry guys, I felt like I sort of forced it up there a little bit, but. If you guys are thinking it looks a little squirrely up there, I think it's just that it's extremely windy. And yet we're very happy to have what we've got yes. for weather. Man, that is so gorgeous, guys. Just absolutely gorgeous. You see it wiggling? I wonder if the gains are just a little bit too, a little bit too high on the elevator. 
and the rudder. Mm. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps. Let's try a slow pass now. Let's see how it relaxes. Just a little bit too much down correction on the elevator. Maybe 1%, 2% too much by the vampire killing zone. Look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plane. Look at that thing, guys. Slows down gorgeously out of the flaps, into the throttle. By the way, definitely not unlimited vertical, but it's a lot better on the 2700, guys. Mm -hmm. That little bit extra weight makes a big difference. Go in between, you good? Mm -hmm. Did you hear that noise? Mm -hmm. I did too. Curious what it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, playing flaps, saying gear coming down. Keeping about 15% throttle. Forcing the nose just a hair as I want to get it down a little bit so I can get it on the runway. Oh man, that is gorgeous. <laughs> oh man, that wind undermined my perfect otherwise landing. Dang it. Okay, so we are going to go straight into forward programming. Forward programming here. And this is so weird because you remember how I couldn't find that thing? Gyro settings. And that isn't uh, what type of meat and cheese you want in your gyro. It's gyro. It's not gyro. I don't think it's gyro. I don't think it is either. Unless it's a dynam. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we're going to change that yaw down yet a little bit. We'll go to 35 hey, and we're going to change the pitch down a little bit. Does it need to go the other Up? way? No. Okay. I don't think so, Okay. but I could be wrong. There was that one time. <laughs> so we're going to try turning it around here. It is calming down there. A little bit. Which is great. Let's it's take really... a close look at this plane. Is there a decal that's loose or anything? Um, that's what I was wondering. Okay, throttle cuts on. By the way, when you're in forward programming, you lose control of the servos and stuff. So make sure your throttle's off. Mm. Just looking. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Those could have been making noise. Did you have your gear down though? Nope. Well, but they still could have buzzed, I suppose. Yeah, it's probably just that caught some wind, it. I have to assume. Ailerons, rudder, steerable. Everything seems fine. I think okay. we're good. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to back taxi. It's just, we feel like we're spoiled right now with this weather because it's literally been so crappy. It's like 60 degrees warmer than it was the other day, and it's only when like When we filmed 40. the FW 190, <laughs> it was, it was uh, that, was it that morning that it was minus 17 Fahrenheit? Yeah, I think so. It so, didn't get below freezing last night, which is like Yeah, it's like crazy. first time. <laughs> That's why the, the, the snow is going away so mm -hmm. quick. And I know some of you are screaming, but we want snow ops. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. This isn't the end of the snow. Okay. So here we go. I feel like that little 10% tie really helps to coordinate the turns for us. Because this thing, it, it actually could probably use just a touch more, like 15 to 20%. We got our countdown right now going on. Here's some upside down flight. <laughs> Immediately I turn it right up. Let's try, let's try. You know what, I'm not gonna try. I was gonna go the wrong way down the runway, but with this wind, it's just gonna change my altitude yeah. too much. I'll end up hitting the lines. So here we go, we'll go over. Just looks so fantastic. Okay, guys, we'll try for a takeoff, or excuse me, a landing. We already did the takeoff earlier. So this 2700 <laughs> seems to be gorgeous for this plane. Yeah. Right over the vampire killing zone. We're going to go just beyond and then cut back like we've been doing today with the wind the way it is. Woo! You see that? Mm hmm That was a big old gust. Okay. We're going to live to see another day. Did you guys see that crazy wind? Here we go. And yes, we are with the wind on that pass, just in case you guys were trying to keep track. 
it slows down really fast, guys. Let's see if we can do a really fast, okay, here we go. That's everything all at once, landing flaps, takeoff flaps, uh, excuse me, landing flaps and gear right away. Going straight into the wind. Of course, now it's trying to be a problem child for me. The wind is cross, it's like 45 degrees. So we're gonna do a crosswind landing here. That is so gorgeous up there. Here we go, one more pass, one more pass. Famous last words. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm going in front of you, okay? Sorry, I'll keep it in picture. <laughs> all right, here we go. So take off flaps. We're gonna just do take off flaps here. We're just kind of go come straight in over the top of the vampire killing zone, which is right here. And uh, we'll just go ahead and bring it in and then we'll deploy the landing flaps right before we get into the final. There we go. Yes! And holding the nose up perfectly. Gorgeously drawn out. It didn't have anything to do with luck at all. <laughs> Guys, this plane is awesome. I'm gonna go grab it right now and come right back. Okay, so final thoughts here. We're at eight minutes, three minutes and 17 past our fives. So that'd be 817. And the last 45 seconds of it was me walking out to it and picking it up. So let's check the voltage before we dig into our final thoughts. Mm, okay. This plane is definitely gonna get second thoughts. There is no doubt about mm -hmm. it. I want for a dead calm day with this plane right now. It definitely does okay in the wind, but I think it's just going to look ph phenomenal in the um, in the calm. Because mm -hmm. all that waggle and wiggle, this long pivot point, 45%. Are wow. you kidding me? That is awesome, guys. So basically, we exceeded the time recommended by three minutes on this pack. And on the 3200, which I think this plane pulls it off. But to be honest with you, the 2700 is probably better. And to be even more frank with you, if you wanted to fly this on a 4S 2200, you've got so much in reserves. Like, why wouldn't you? I mean, the thing would be so light on its feet. You could bring that thing up and, and just draw out beautiful uh, flared landings. And uh, can you ask for much more? I mean, this is just a gorgeous plane. Mm -hmm. And with these smart packs, it's 2700 4S. I just feel like it's great. Now, I'm I'm certain that you could fly this thing with a smaller pack. You could probably get away with a 3S, but I just think that it's probably, you know, you're not gonna like the way it performs because that 4S really gives it a good power to weight ratio in my opinion. And, uh, you know, in airplanes, power saves lives, guys. Mm -hmm. So you definitely wanna take advantage of the power if it exists. So far, Annex 6 has been phenomenal. We have noticed uh, here and there, like really minor glitches, uh, but like really nothing that matters. Um, we haven't ever had any problems losing communication or anything. Um, we had some people asking us to do a range test and it's like, I'm not gonna do that with all the snow out here. It's gonna be a huge mess. So basically, if you wanna do a range test, what you do is you turn the range test on. Here's the range test. And what happens is the test distance is 30 meters. Okay, so guys, 30 meters is 90 feet. That's a long ways away. So what you do is you basically turn that on and then, what do you press the bind? See, reduce power, okay, full power. And all that does is you sit there and you have the camera crew go down there and they call out, yeah, left, left on the ailerons, right on the ailerons, whatever. Pull up on the elevator, down on the elevator, you know, steerable, you know, do the flaps, whatever. And you just hold that button and then you actuate the, the, the mechanism. And when you reduce that power, then it's going to basically give you some semblance of a linear representation of much further. So, but I mean, 30 meters is a long ways. So if you guys want to know how to do that, I mean, honestly, you're probably supposed to do that on every model. Um, so I'll just let you guys make your mind up on how you want to handle that. But in closing on this NX6, I know you guys have been asking me, you know, hey, how does it work? The display has been phenomenal, like that weird beeping at the end. I don't know what the heck it did that for, but it hasn't caused us any problems. Like mm -hmm. I said, there's been, I would say five to six very weird, small, totally nonsensical beeps. 
But beyond that, it's basically been good. And then in the forward programming, sometimes you'll get into a, the menu where you're setting your gain. And the gain is like the 1x versus 0.25x, 0.5x, and it will, it will wander off of what you think it is. So you have to just get it there and click and then move on and it'll be fine. Yeah. And it does set the value. Um, but for some reason, it scrolls. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that Horizon or Spectrum in this case is going to update the firmware and fix those couple of glitches we've noticed. And then also when you name a model and you exit from naming the model, it will beep, 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 beep. And then, I don't know, there's probably some test that they built into the software and they forgot to take the beeps out. Because when I'm doing software development, I always put beeps and it, you know, if you forget to take the beeps out, it can be pretty annoying for the end user. So, but the developers love it. <laughs> anyway, so this, uh, this Pilatus uh, PC21 is just absolutely gorgeous. Honestly, it makes me want to get a bigger one. The landing gear don't have any suspension on them, but they are beautiful. They look great, they work well, they do what they need to do. They don't do anything else at all. Um, I thought that they were gonna have a little suspension on them, but they just, you just really don't need it. Those wheels are hard, and if you're on a hard surface, it's actually not too bad. Um, and then the other thing too, is we are fighting some pretty good drifty, uh, gusty wind here. I would say that right now we're between seven seven mile an hour to 10 mile an hour gusts mm -hmm. and we're nominal we're probably about like three miles an hour yeah, solid so more. you know we're getting a five mile an hour shift and when you've got a smaller plane like this it's gonna it's gonna really take it and it's gonna go and these these sharklets or this formed wing whatever they call that i love the way it looks this thing didn't want to slip out from under itself the whole time which is wonderful we just did the uh 300 extra the other day and really being well received uh, the video is doing great you guys must be loving it um, and, and I'm not a 3D pilot, guys. I'm a scale. I, I like scale planes. That's my thing. But that plane is just gorgeous. And yes, it is a scale plane. So it's kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a way for me to kind of have what I want, have my cake and eat it too. That's what I can call it. Because it's a scale plane. It's based on a real plane. Um, but it is absolutely gorgeous. And that thing flew great. But then this is a scale plane, okay? That extra is going to be more of an immersive so, sorry, our camera ran out of memory. The immersiveness of the experience on the 300 Extra, it, it might give you more bang for your buck if you're into 3D. But if you're not, this is a really good choice. Now, FMS makes a really good plane. This thing goes together well. Did we have a problem with one of the screws? I don't know, just watch the build if you wanna see. We I think like we did- We had a random little We ran into thing. a- one issue trying to get one screw lined up, but it was nothing like the dynams we've done in <laughs> no. the past. I mean, it was like a five minute thing instead of a two hour thing. Yeah. And then also we kind of screwed up in picking a bad spot for mounting the receiver, yeah. which later we corrected. And again, it was like, you know, on video, I think we spent probably 10 minutes, mostly on cable management and we were able to just move it over. So yeah. it worked out good. So even if you fold through the entire process, just use less hot glue until you know it's the right spot. Well, <laughs> and the CG was way more forward than we thought the it battery was, trail yeah. location than we thought it was gonna be. Yeah, and that's so. one thing that we noticed, like if there was a complaint on this plane, and to be honest with you, it's hardly a complaint, is that the battery sticks way over the battery tray, mm -hmm. which is kind of annoying. And I think part of that is, uh, it, it's because the smart packs are so small and concise and awesome that you end up with basically a smaller battery than FMS thought we were gonna have access to. Yeah. So now some of you guys are gonna think I'm blowing smoke on that, but I'm not. It's just, when I was using the Turnigy Heavy Duty, they were, they might've been a third heavier, you know? So a third heavier, but the problem is look where the, look where the CG is on this plane. The battery tray is from here to here. Mm -hmm. So that means like, unless you needed to add tail weight to this plane, which is possible, but I don't really think so. Um, no matter what battery size you add, you're going to end up having to have it forward. So just use that in consideration for where you put your stuff. And we got the wiring really tied it up nicely in there. So yeah. stick around for the build. We're going to do the unbox, build, and radio setup with forward programming. You'll notice we made a couple of minor tweaks. Nothing to write home about. You wouldn't have had to make those adjustments. Um, but that's one thing. One favor I can ask you guys. When you ask me questions on the video, sometimes the questions come like three years later and I have no clue. I can't remember. I mean, we've done thousands of these videos. So if you happen to have a weird question like, hey, what was the settings on your flaps? I mean, you're gonna have to go and look because I don't know. Um, and that being said, we got so many transmitters now that it's kind of almost hard to remember which transmitter the plane is on. Yeah. So the NX6 
I think soon will be replaced by the NX8 in the uh, Philips Hacienda. But uh, for now, we are loving it. It's been very good. There hasn't been a thing that we haven't been able to do. And the things that we've had, like I said, those little minor glitches have been extremely minor and basically like minor annoyances. They, re they really don't even amount to anything. Right. So very happy. And I had the DX18 before, guys. So it's not like I was using some crappy transmitter before and I upgraded to this or downgraded to this. No, I downgraded to this a lot. I went from the top of the line car. Well, it was a DX. There was a DX20. But the DX18 was really good. And it still is. I've still got like 90 models in that thing. Yeah. So, camera crew, what are your thoughts on this thing? It's a really cool plane. I like it. Looks good. It was easy to build, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. And I think on a dead calm day, this thing is going to show a lot better. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to absolutely be doing a lot of these uh, planes. We're going to try to get a lot of second thoughts once all the snow goes bye-bye, which is going to be glorious. <laughs> um, and I know some of you guys really want to see float flights on the snow and stuff like that. But, you know, I don't... I don't know if maybe you guys don't realize how horrible it is out here. It, when it's snowy, it's not just that it's snowy, it's that there's no foliage on the trees. So the wind whips through here twice as fast as it mm -hmm. would during the summer. And it's also very cold. So, I mean, that's like ice. I don't know if you guys yeah, from Hawaii not, and stuff, you may not understand. It's not like this powdery movie snow. It's like crunchy, icy yeah. crap. <laughs> yeah, like show them on the ground right now. Well, this is our mud pool right now that we have, but it's quite beautiful. It's here. I don't want to walk in it because I got to go inside. Because where we are, it gets warm for a day or two, and everyone thinks it's going to be spring, and then all of this stuff refreezes, and then yep. our kids can like walk on top of this all the way down because it's just ice. Yeah, and which you... is not fun for planes either. No, the planes. We've been really fortunate that the times we've gone off the side of the runway it's been off the side of the runway into soft snow mm -hmm. because you will destroy a plane if you hit a bank of snow. Yep. It's just like, I don't know if any of you have ever like been doing donuts as a kid, you know, in high school or whatever. And you're like, Hey, I'm just going to spin around and Oh, no big deal. I'll just hit that bank. It won't damage the car at all. And then you like rip the entire front end of your car off. You know, that, that, didn't, that did not happen to me, but I watched it happen more than once. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> just saying foam planes either, are not as strong as, you know, whatever car you had in high school. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, guys, stick around for the unbox, build and radio setup. Definitely check the link. We're gonna link to this plane, the receiver we used, which is the 631, and uh, really happy with it, the NX6. We'll link to the batteries that we flew the plane on, and then any questions you have, just leave them in the comments below. We always love to hear from you guys on uh, what's going on in your world and if you want some clarification. But again, it's really hard for us to remember some of these uh, random settings. If it's in the video, that's what it is basically. And if we change it, it'll be in the second thoughts video. So if you're watching a second thoughts and you're not sure you know, how we initially did it, just go back to the first video in the series and you can look on the playlist. Every plane has a playlist and every playlist is up to date unless it's not and please do tell me and occasionally you guys do catch one that's not in a playlist and i didn't realize it because youtube screwed up or we screwed up generally we screwed up um, but there have been a few times where i swear that i did it and then it didn't actually go mm -hmm. so just let us know and we will add them you can also word search for any of the videos on our channel and you can find them that way which is really honestly the easiest way to do it because you're talking about like 1400 plus videos right now so by the way, we're getting close to 100,000 subscribers and we need to keep thanking you guys for coming back for more. The more you come, the more you like, <laughs> the more you like, the more YouTube will help bring in more people, which helps to perpetuate the cycle of insanity and addiction in RC. And we want you to be the next addict. Come back for more. All right, guys, you've already seen it, but we haven't. So we're really excited for this thing. The Pilatus. Pilatus. Pilatus PC21. We've been doing a lot of planes that I don't know how to pronounce properly. I won't go through the entire list, but you've seen them. All right. So this is a plug and fly. And I just, I was going through comments today and I realized that I had said the other day that a plane was a plug and fly and it was actually a bind and fly. Oh, really? Yeah. I, we got on to the next topic immediately and just never, never came back. Here it is. The Pilates PC21. I've been wanting to do one of these forever, guys. 
And this is sort of almost a viewer request because we've had a handful of guys asking us to do this plane as well. The FMS planes have been really good. And previously, before recently, we have not done a lot of these plug and fly planes. We've just been having really good luck with these things. And with the recent advent, look at this. Next to my pairs, I've got pairs of lots receivers of, here. Lots of pairs. Yes. This is the AR8360T, which is gonna give you telemetry and then full safe. All of this is forward programmable, which is super nice. And then this, the AR631, which is what's coming in a lot of the bind and fly planes these days. So I sort of hate to use the 8360 on this plane because I don't think I'm gonna need the eight channels. I'll just need the six. So I think what we're gonna do is, cause of course this has flaps and retracts. And of course, okay, flaps, retracts, uh, elevator rudder, ailerons, throttle. So we should be okay. And I believe there's actually a couple extra channels for controlling uh, things like the S3X and safe, but we'll find out. If we have any problems, then we can always just revert back to the AR8360T, which of course is a new transmitter or a new receiver for us. And we're gonna use the NX6 still right now. So without further ado, we're gonna unbox this thing. I just wanted to show you what we were planning on. It's just the new receivers have been so much easier to work with than the AR636A and B ever were. Um, as a plug and fly, they were a pain because you had to hook them up to the computer, do all sorts of weird programming. And it just, I mean, they worked good once you got them set up, but they were kind of a pain to set up. They weren't very user friendly. The forward yet. programming is super nice because you do everything from the transmitter. Yeah. Jeez, these things are always so tight. I don't know why they do that, but it's, I mean, obviously we don't have a lot of damage from FMS or from Horizon planes in general. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Get out of there. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna set this thing up in the background so you can enjoy the beautiful artwork. This is most definitely a plug and fly plane. I'm really excited to do this plane because I just think it's a sweet looking plane. And I, I don't know why, but I just like the way turboprop planes look. So what's a turboprop camera crew? It, how is it different than a regular prop? It has the little outlet things. It's, it's a turbine. It's like a jet engine and it spins a prop. Oh. Yep. Hmm. It's just like, it's like the M1A1 Abrams tank. That runs on a jet engine too, a turbine. See, I yeah, it turns an output shaft that runs the, the whole thing. Okay, so these are the horizontal stabilizers, which is kind of weird. It looks almost like a vertical stabilizer. Yeah. Right? Really high quality hinges too, look at this. Okay, so the horizontal stabilizers, it feels like a pinch hinge, but it's gotta be embedded with something because it feels super sturdy. So I don't know, it could just be a pinch in, so I don't want to misspeak. With an opaque paint job like this, you really can't tell um, unless you know, unless they indicate it to us. And I haven't seen any indication, but I also haven't looked for it. And this prop is really pretty. It reminds me of the EC1500 props. Ooh, cool. But I love the fact that they have the detail on the tips. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. And I don't like doing that myself, but I used to do it all the time. That is so pretty. So this is an FMS prop that's 10-7, five-bladed prop, just really gorgeous. Hope it's balanced nicely. It looks like it will be. It's sharp too. It's gonna like, look really here, cool. show them how sharp it is. Oh, geez. I told you it's crazy. Oh, no. All right, so then we've got the carbon fiber wing spar for, presumably for here. Yep, that's right. That's gonna make that super strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have the manual double folded, really? Come on now. I hate when manuals are folded, guys. But at least we have a good manual that's mostly in English. Yep. We'll see. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh, here we go. 1100 millimeters. 
1680 grams. It's a 40 amp ESC. Here, do you want to show them this real quick while I get some of this foam unfoamed? Yeah, so then they can know Ooh, how you're hold not on, let's doing show it them in this. order. See this? That was hiding in there. Oh, the nut and that bolt little sack. corner slot. Yeah, so you'll want to check for that. Jeez, those things are vicious looking. Oh my goodness. Those Obviously, like little they're, pedo tubes? They're antennas or, or pedo some, tubes yeah. or something that go into the wing. Yeah, I see they go into every wing or each wing right here. Mm. But I believe you just stab them in. So we're going to have to have a little oh. bit of glue to hold those in. Okay, we got the spinner here. Yeah, it shows it here, Emmanuel. Color matches nicely. I'm super excited about the red. That looks so pretty. Yeah, the color is a really good match. Sometimes the plastic spinners, though, they just, they're a little underwhelming to me. But they always get on the planes and they're just fine. Mm -hmm. And if they're molded that way, then if you get a scuff from like a rough landing or a nose over, then you, you don't see it. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. I love the shape of this wing. I didn't realize there was so much dihedral on there. But then this little sharklet, if you will, or winglet, I love that detail. It's so cool looking. And what a pretty looking, what a really beautiful looking plane. Whoa, look at this. They have a little junction box here. That's, that's interesting from FMS here. Looks like that's going to help us get up to the receiver so they can lengthen the line length. That is really cool. Foam to protect the foam. Okay, so we're just gonna pull this plane right out. Oh man, that is so gorgeous. That is one of the most beautiful canopies I've seen in a long time. I love the exhaust ports on there, it's so beautiful. Look at the pilot, he's got a mustache. He does have some asymmetry of the eyes. I think you might wanna to get to the, uh, the doctor, the eye doctor <laughs> for that. But look how clear the canopy is, that yeah. is so beautiful. I love that, instrument clusters in there. And then look at the realistic looking seats. That is so cool. Oh wow, look at this. We've got the little fin here. I believe that'd be an antenna in real life. And then look at this. We had some overspray here. So they must have had that installed before. So that's a nine gram servo for the elevator. Presumably it's a nine gram servo up front. So we have the release here. So let's pop this open real quick. Real easy to take off. Here's the ESC, it looks dinky. And then that little warning thing, and they've got an XT60 on here, FMS plate, got kind of the mid-grade straps, the kind that don't break easy, but they're still a pain to use. If you have enough room, it, these are not a factor. If it's tight, they're a pain. Yeah, it looks like a nine gram servo that's got a linkage that goes to the back. So the rudder has a splitter, and that's so that you can run the steerable nose gear. Okay, cool. Obviously this plane has retracts, retractable landing gear. So that's really cool. That looks pretty simple. The red doesn't match great here. Mm -mm. In fact, it's kind of a worse match than this, mm -hmm. but not a, not a big factor. I don't think it's gonna be noticeable. I caught something on my pant leg here and I'm wondering what it was. Oh, it was this antenna I bet. Look at that little thing. That oh. is so cool. These are the types of details. And this is the scale size. I just love that. That's so cool. Of course, big old motor up here. Look at this, brushless. Oh, uh, I can't quite make the angle to see what it says, so I'll just have to defer to whatever the manual says. Mm -hmm. But look at his helmet. It says Miracle on there. That is so detailed. I really like that. I like it better than the picture on the box. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those that it looks way better in person. Yeah, when you can actually see it in mm -hmm. there. So as usual, all the foam fits together nicely. It's very well packed. Um, gosh, I keep, I think the last time we had damage on a Horizon plane was we had a little teeny scuff on our timber 1.5 meter. And that has been a long time ago, mm -hmm. our original 1.5 meter timber. And it was still really minor damage, but even still, I'm always super impressed with how nicely the packages come from Horizon Hobby. And, and that's up against all the other brands. 
I can't even think of, I know when we get stuff from Motion, which has been a long time since we've done anything from Motion, um, they, they seem to do a good job with packaging too. Mm -hmm. But um, it's certainly better than garbage bags from other vendors that we work with. These gear door match really yeah. nicely. They do seem a lot better. Match. Look like a really detailed landing gear. I'm excited to see that. These are hard. They're foam, but they're hard. They almost look like rubbery. No, they're, they're yeah, definitely they foam and they're hard. So these are nine gram servos, digital servos. That's kind of cool. And then <clears throat> let's see if we can overdrive these. It's kind of not, not very nice to your servos. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. A little foul. Well, it doesn't actually pull down in a way. So it's just, it's just a nice flap. But I like that they've got this overhang here. I don't know what they call that there. I would just normally call this a regular flap, but it's almost like a hybrid split flap and a regular um, flap. So what we're gonna do now is we will pause, we'll get the boxes cleaned up and come right back for the build part. All right, so we're back with the PC21, the 1100 millimeter, and we are really excited about this plane because everything looks super well put together. And we're actually about ready to put the spinner together. I don't even know what the instructions say. I'm just going to do this first. <laughs> now, how are you going to line this up? It doesn't quite make itself obvious. Just make sure that the blade goes up against this surface here. And then as you press down, it'll mesh. Okay. See how that locks in? See how it's locked in so it can't spin. And then you slide this onto the, slide this on, and then it's keyed on the, sh on the prop shaft. So you kind of have to hold. There you go. And then it slips back. Did you see that? Nice. Yeah. You could see it keying in there. Mm -hmm. You could see it slipping. <clears throat> All right, good. And then I'm just going to tighten this on. And then I'm going to use one of two screwdrivers that I have. We found the China screwdriver to work nice for this. Okay. So I'm just using this to torque. Now be careful. This is sharp. It'll cut you. So you have to spread out the load a little bit here. You don't want to just do it all in one spot because you will cut yourself. You see how the whole plane's moving? Mm -hmm. That's how you can tell you're probably about tight enough. Okay, so that's nice and torqued on there. So at this point, the thing would fly, but obviously we want to beautify it with the spinner. Okay, so the spinner goes on here. And look at that tight fit. That is just gorgeous. I love that it wraps all the way around on both sides, just love it. Then let's show the people at home what we got for hardware. This is how ridiculously simple this is. Yep. We have five everything. screws. This is a two millimeter, okay? Thanks Tom for sending us this tool. We needed it and we didn't even know it. Ah. And the plane stand incidentally. I was gonna say, which one? This is just comically easy compared to some of our other competitive brands. I know, we're not done yet, but it should be. Are you kidding me? I know. It's just like... Like every step from here on out could go horribly and it would still be easier. <laughs> when I can tell you what to do, <clears throat> you know it's going to be. Okay, so we're just going to... Well, let's put the main wing on last. I'm not even reading the instructions on this thing because it's just so dang easy. Okay, if we run into problems. So this thing, when we were unboxing, we slipped this in. There's four plastic wood screws, plastic looking plastic screws that look like wood screws, sorry. Okay, then just feed that thing through. And then you kind of have to spread the lips and cram it in, right, like that. Yeah, be kind of gentle though. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise it'll rip it up. So now I'm gonna come in from the other side too at the same time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try to get this wing in here with as minimal damage because this is going to, this is going to have to be pulled open. That's what I meant. Okay. So you see how, as I push down, as I push down, it's kind of squishing the foam. Okay. Just mitigate the damage. And there you have it guys. Okay. So the same thing over here. You have to get it started. Once you're started, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Okay. Oh man, that sounded bad. Did I hit something? Oh. Yeah, I need to trade spots here. I'm just gonna spin the plane around. Okay. 
I don't want to look right here. Okay. So I've got the front started and then I just need to make sure that these two halves will line up when I, when I get them into the right spot. Okay. And it's just really not wanting to start. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so it's starting now. Just trying to make sure I don't grab the servo in the wrong way. Goodness gracious. That's pretty hard to ram in there. I had a feeling this was gonna be tight, but it's just because it's all foam, there's not like a great place to hang on. Mm -hmm. And that's really the hardest part is I'm trying to get my camera crew an angle and there's just no way for me to make an angle here. Camera crew, you're just gonna have to yeah. reposition a little bit. Because the rudder is just big enough that my fingers can't quite get past it. When you squish into the foam with your fingertips, you're going to leave marks. So you have to dissipate the load of your hand over as much surface area as you can. If you try doing this, you're going to put big dents in it and you'll see your fingerprints. Okay, so not your fingerprints, but bumps from yeah. each of your fingers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just trying to find a spot where I can push against. Goodness gracious. Okay, so I'm gonna actually, this sounds kind of counterintuitive, but I'm gonna pull this other side out and I'm gonna take that thing out all together and just try to get this started on its own. Okay, so it went that time, but you see how much crushing I had to do? That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy, goodness gracious. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get one of these screws in here cause that's gonna help hold things together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. See how it wants to pop out immediately? Yep. I'm gonna need your help. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna hold, can you push that in up against my hand? Hey, don't push here. You push have here, to, because right. if you push here, you see it's already crushed where you pushed. So it's, it's challenging. You have to kind of have your hand in this spot and then push hard. Am I caught on something? You know what guys, look. Know. That's what's going on. Mm. I was like, why would that not feed in there? Okay, so this is, this is where the screw, it's a screw backer. So that's gonna be received from the top. I wondered why that was being so difficult. Okay, so if that happens to you, we already have our china glue out. Yep. I didn't expect to have a problem like that. It's kind of a small problem really, if you get right down to it, because now that I know what was going on, I was like, this other side went in so much easier. Yeah. Do you see what happened there? So I'm just gonna goop a little bit of glue in there. Now this is contact adhesive. So the best way to do it, if you can, would be to spread the stuff around. Cause I don't wanna yank the whole thing out. There's no real advantage to that. Cause it's still glued halfway. I'm gonna get down in there where that foam broke apart. And I'm just gonna work that in there. And if you want this to have the best possible outcome, you would let that sit for a few minutes, okay? And a few minutes after you do that, then it's gonna be tacked up to the point where it will stick and have a really strong bond. Now you can stick it together right now and it will have a strong bond and I'll tell you why. Because as soon as we squish this together, it's still gonna work. It's just not gonna be tacky immediately, okay? This is gonna take a lot longer to cure, mm. okay? But because of the nature of what we're doing here, I'm just gonna try this here. You see how I'm gonna rest this onto the plastic and then I'm gonna pivot it in now we couldn't have done that first because we had our carbon fiber spar in there already. Okay, there we go. Then I can just guide this along. Okay, so the other side we've already went in, so we should be okay. And then I can see where the screw hole is. So once we torque this thing in there, we should be, see how it's going at an angle? You have to push the wing in and then finish the screwing. Okay, and then the screw's going super easy. Okay. All right, so that keeps the front end while we're gonna do the back end. That was surprisingly more technically challenging than I thought, yeah. only because the thing popped off on us, mm -hmm. basically. So now this time, when you push, it's not gonna pull out. 
See, show the people that slot. Do you see the slot? That red really disappears. Yeah. Okay, so as I'm pushing, this screw is gonna go in there and it's gonna bite and it's gonna center up that hole and it's gonna pull this wing in just a little bit. So you'll notice the screw goes in and it's like this and it'll eventually walk up like that. Okay, see how it turned? So now the screw's like this and as it tightens, it's gonna pull itself into the socket and it's gonna go straight, okay? Watch it straighten up as it goes. It's very, you see what's happening to the angle of the screwdriver though? Because mm -hmm. I have nowhere for the screwdriver to be. I'm gonna actually work this rudder and then that'll give me a little bit better angle to get this screwdriver. I almost need to get a longer screwdriver. Now the other thing you can do is sometimes you can put the other half of the wing on and it will kind of help to hold things in place. But in this case, all I'm after is just basically getting this screw to get about halfway down and then it should be straight and it should be pretty easy straight, straight shooting project. See how it's straightening up as I go now? Mm -hmm. And then once that sinks down into the countersink, it's gonna pull that wing in and make sure that it's fully seated, regardless of how you screwed up the insertation process. And if you're inexperienced with insertation, then you'll be an expert after you do this plane. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna stick the rod in the hole. There's only one hole here, so it's not really hard to find it. And that lined up really good. Okay, so now we can just line that back up there. And we've already gotten this one in, so it should go pretty smooth. I'm just feeling with my middle finger to get that plastic lined up. Yep, there we go. And then now I just need to make sure my elevators are even and that will align the two halves and now we're good. Now we're golden. So now they'll work together. Well, that was a little bit more technically challenging than I expected it might yeah. be. Like I said, this plane just looks ridiculously easy to assemble. And to be honest with you, we're gonna end up with a total of nine screws, right? Four for the wing, Yep. one for the spinner, and then four for the back. And honestly, my only complaint, if there were a complaint, is that they use two different styles. Um, yeah. Four Phillips. of them are Phillips, and then five of them are two millimeter uh, hex. Mm -hmm. It would be kind of nice to have all Phillips or all hex, just for the fact that a lot of people are not gonna wanna have both of those tools. Granted, if you're into the hobby, if you're getting this deep into the hobby, you've got that. You've got a tool. Yeah. That, that's beautiful. It's super secure. It's very tight. You don't have any ambiguity if, if, if it got into the socket the way it needs to be. Mm -hmm. I love the way that went together with the exception of the thing that popped up. Now I'm gonna center my servo for the rudder so that that doesn't look goofy until we're done. Okay, cool. So now the next step, by the way, that snap has been working really nice too. Mm -hmm. Gosh, that is so gorgeous already. That prop is really cool. I love the way this plane looks. It's so weird that I've made it this long without getting one of these. Because I really do think this is a sweet looking plane. It just has never, I don't know, there's just certain planes that I just never get. And then all of a sudden, the opportunity comes up and there it is. Yeah. So it's an easy answer at that point, that's for sure. I'd like to do a bigger one of these as well at some point. 1.1 meter size class is, is kind of a weird size. Uh, 1.2 is really popular. There's a few that do 1.3 and then there's a few that do the 1.1 meter. But my experience has been typically in the 1.1 meter, you're not gonna find retracts and flaps. And this does not have LEDs that I know of. Yeah, I don't see any LEDs on it, but that'd be one of the features that'd be really cool. Okay, so I don't know if I'm really supposed to do anything fancy with that. I just need to feed it up into this opening. It almost seems to me like I'm gonna to need to cut that zip tie at some point. To lengthen everything? Well, no, this whole thing is gonna go through. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so then, I'm not sure exactly how that works. Do they have any instructions about it? Not much. I know it said something about feed the... I have an idea. I'm gonna try with that zip tie. Should I just cut it? Just says install the wing, remove canopy hatch, guide the multi-connector wires through the hole located in the bottom of the fuse, 
align the wing with the fuse and secure into position. That's literally all it says. So, so they don't tell you exactly where to put these things either, do they? But it doesn't, I mean like the picture. This is why I don't like folded manuals, yes, guys. Yes, it is. It's really annoying to have a manual that's really well done and then have it undermined by having stupid folds in it like this. If anybody's gotten a document in the mail that says do not fold and then it's folded, it just wants you to, this is, this is what I do sometimes and it works because I can't handle when the stupid manual is constantly flipping up on me. Okay, so this looks like, based on the drawing, maybe that second panel line in, you can't see there and there's not really, well, there's Rich. Let's see what Rich says. The RC Informer. Looks like it's in here on that third panel line in. Yeah. So there's not a mark for it? Well, there's a third panel line. Oh, okay. So let's do that real quick while we're kind of in between steps, I suppose. See this, guys? I'm gonna just take the china glue and I'm gonna pierce this in first. For those of you who have to transport your planes a lot, you may not wanna actually use glue because then you can pull these suckers out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so into that mark, try to keep it straight so it doesn't look dumb. And then just get in there and get a little bit of china glue on it. That should be good. To, it doesn't need a lot, just something to hold it, hold it in there. It's not like it's gonna be loaded with anything. That was quite slathery. Just spin it as I go. Okay, and then the same thing on the other side. Third panel line in, just kind of holding it perpendicular and slipping it in until it hits that first little mark. Okay, I'm actually gonna take some of the glue from this side just cause then I can clean up that side at the same step. And this time I'm gonna be a little bit more careful to just put it at the very, very end. Cause like I said, you don't hardly need any glue to hold it in there. It holds itself in there with pressure. Yeah, so Rich with the RC Informer, or the RC Informer has been doing this forever. Kind of like what I've been doing here for a few years and he's done a lot to really advance his hobby with his work with FMS. And so I don't ever really mean to take anything away from these veterans in the community and always appreciated his work. Everybody puts their own spin on it, obviously. But uh, look at that, that is so beautiful. Just really like the way that looks. Okay, so now we need to figure out what's going on though with this wire. See that? It says figure 10. Oh, there, it's labeled now. So it looks like that's LED breakout points there. So yeah, we must need to cut this. See? I've never seen one of those from FMS yet, which I sh I'm sure some of you guys watching this are thinking, I can't believe you haven't seen that before. Well, we haven't done that many FMS planes, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna untangle this. And then I'm noticing this thing and it's making me kind of nervous. Oh, okay, so that's the gear plug. It just comes out in a different spot than the rest of the other stuff, okay? So that's where we're gonna hook up our nose gear, okay? And then the rest of these things, flaps, ailerons, and gear. Hmm, that's kind of weird. What's the purpose of the little brick thing? It says light 651. I don't know, just to make, see, cause you couldn't put, you potentially couldn't reach your receiver mm. and then all the different wires are different lengths. So what this does is it helps to kind of keep things tucked in in a nice spot. Hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to tuck this down just like this. And then we're just gonna feed these up through the wing. But my goal is to kind of keep this down in the little cavity. Tucked in that little pocket. Yeah, there. exactly. 
because then that'll make it a lot neater mm -hmm. and you'll have less. See, this one's also gear, so I'm actually gonna take that label and with two fingers, I'm just gonna pull that up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly. So this goes to the nose gear and then of course this goes to the receiver, okay? So we'll just have to remember that. It's not a big deal. It's not gonna be hard to remember that. Okay. All right. So some of these things, we don't just show you what we did, we show you how we arrived at what we did. And occasionally I'll have people that kind of get on my case about that. And our objective here is not to show you how to build one plane. Our objective is to teach you how to build these planes. And when I say build, I, I know that these are just being assembled because back in the day, we used to have to build these things um, all the way from the balsa wood up to the, you know, installing the engines and all sorts of extra effort. So today it's so much easier than it ever was. And the whole history of the, the hobby, it's come so far. That being said, it's come so far for some of the competitive brands. <laughs> some of the other, oh man, that was so easy. It's already tight. That's amazing. I know. Well, and just because you do it a certain way doesn't mean that somebody else has to do it. But if you pick up on something or, you know, the way that you think through something, if it helps somebody else mm -hmm. with this model or a different model. Like... Well, like I said, we're trying to teach you guys how to enjoy the hobby not just tell you how to put together an FMS PC21, okay? Because there's a, a million videos like that, but my objective here is to kind of get you up to speed, especially if you're new. Okay, cool. So there is one extra screw from each style if you'll look down here, camera crew. We got the- One extra. From the wing from there, and then one from and the then, tail. Yep. Okay, cool. Let's look at this real quick, because it is beautiful. Wow. Man, that thing is gorgeous. Look at that thing. I am really liking the way that looks. The antennas, all the little scale details. Look where the decals are, the rescue. Mm -hmm. Just, I just really like the way that this thing looks. I can't wait to see the retracts open up. Obviously we still have a little bit of work ahead of us, but I had to pause and admire the beauty. Okay, so let's, uh, Let's look at this for a second. We're not going to actually hook it up. Uh, does it tell us what hole to put it in? It does. Which one? There is a page. So this, of course, is for the elevator. So they're suggesting the bottom hole, which will be the least output. And then on the elevator, they're suggesting, well, that's a little bit different than that. So on the horn, they want it to be on the outside most hole and then on the arm, they want it on the outside most hole for the elevator, okay? So in looking at this, obviously we're gonna need to have this flipped over here like that. So we're gonna go to the outermost hole of the servo. Ooh, that's pretty tight. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna try to ram it in there real quick. Oh, there it goes. It's in. Then this one here, we're gonna slide it in, but we're not gonna snap it yet, okay? The reason we're not gonna snap this yet is because we need to basically turn on the receiver so that we know where everything goes, okay? All right, so without further ado, let's flip this sucker over. Man, that is so pretty. And a, a 1.2 meter size is very manageable, especially with the gear retracted. I'm six foot tall for reference. So if I rest that on my toes, you can see it's not an overly huge plane. Mm -hmm. And this thing is nice and sleek. You'd be able to easily get that into a passenger side, you know, chair in a car, okay? Um, if you have a truck, it'd be super easy. If you have an SUV, it'd be super easy. Uh, but a lot of times what happens is the tail becomes a big factor. And this plane does not have an overly large tail, mm -hmm. which helps a lot. Okay, so the next step I think is gonna be to go ahead and start getting the receiver installed. So we'll clean up and come right back. So before we get into the radio setup, I just wanted to show you that in the manual, it seemed like we couldn't find some of this information. So we're just gonna show you this and if you need to pause it, you can pause it now. But basically what we're looking at here is the size of batteries is 2600 through 3300 milliamp 4S 
or 14.8 bolts. So what we've got here is a 2700 and a 3200. So just under the max and just over the minimum. And these are both, of course, 4S. These are Gen 1 smart packs. Yes, of course, Gen 2 are out, but we don't have access to every battery in Gen 2 yet. So we're gonna just go with this and that should be fine with the IC3 connector that will mate up with an XT60, okay. Um, not an XT60 pack on an IC3 plane, but vice versa, you're okay. So the battery with an IC3 will go into an XT60. It's a little bit harder, and if you wanna do an adapter, that's fine, I just don't wanna add the weight. We're gonna use the NX6 today. Eventually we'll be using an NX8, but we've been very happy with that so far. And I'd like to start, I'd like to start with the AR631, okay? So that's what we're gonna plan on using. Uh, but before we even dig into that, I know I mentioned that we were gonna start with the radio setup next. We need to mark the CG. Mm -hmm. So the center of gravity is at 90 to 95 millimeters from the leading edge of the wing. Okay, so we can set this aside for now. We'll come back to that receiver. Let's go ahead and mark. So I'm using a red marker to mark a red wing. So 90 to 95 millimeters. Okay, so nine centimeters is 90 millimeters. And usually what I do is I treat the leading edge of the wing. See, there's this scoop here. And it's really kind of tough because the manufacturers don't always specify, is this the leading edge or is that the leading edge? Well, since this is technically the wing on this model, I'm gonna treat that as the leading edge of the wing. Now, if I'm wrong, that's gonna be five millimeters of error, okay? So I'm gonna just come out, and, and you want this to be imagining a square surface, a flat plane like this, and then a flat plane like this, okay? Don't follow the contours. We did that early in our existence, and we learned that we were wrong, okay? So I'm just gonna come in here and just sight down. I'm looking with my eyes right now like this. I'm just sighting down the length of this, See if you can give them a viewer like this. Can you hold that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm sighting down and as I come out to where I wanna be, then I can go ahead and make my, my mark. So I'll make a mark something like this and then I'll switch to 95 millimeters and then I'll line up and just sight down and I can make another mark. Okay, so then if any doubt, you can take your, you can take and measure five millimeters and see if you have a gap between your marks that's commensurate to that. Yeah, which we do. Okay, so you're probably thinking to yourself, I can't believe you just gouge all your planes like that. Yeah, I know. I do. And then I'm just gonna mark this with a slightly darker mark, which is gonna be red. And I'll be able to feel this with my middle finger and my index finger when I flip the plane upside down to check for CG. It's gonna show up horribly on camera. If you put that Whatever in the it center, is. it's probably gonna focus for you. We're gonna zoom in so that it has nothing else. <laughs> to see. Yeah. So, without further ado, we're gonna copy that to the other side. Now, you'll notice they've got these cool texture strips detailed in there. So that's always kind of neat. So I pulled my marks out far enough that I can have that uh, symmetrical. So all I'm doing is I'm just sighting down like this. And I'm just gonna make my first mark. And then I go out to the 95 millimeters. And, and there's a, a certain amount of, I don't wanna call this like skill, it's just more of a, it's, it's something you learn, um, being able to mark the CG. But then you can also kind of read the way that a plane is flying to tell if the CG is correct or incorrect, or if you've maybe got a little bit of room for improvement. And these are the types of things that you kind of pick up on as you get a little bit more experienced. Uh, tail heavy planes tend to fly once. Uh, nose heavy planes are actually, um, it takes a lot of elevator input to get them to fly because they fly so stable that it's hard to interrupt that stability. So a nose heavy plane is gonna be weak on elevator. So when you give it elevator, it's not gonna wanna pull up. It's not gonna wanna push down. Well, it'll push down pretty quick. Um, but if you have a tail heavy plane, it's gonna be super, super sketchy on the elevator. And it's gonna make you feel like you need to increase the expo a bunch. So obviously we're not gonna test the X, we're not gonna test the CG just quite yet because we don't have the receiver in there yet and we don't have the battery in there yet. So there's gonna be uh, to the receiver, a small factor, and of course the battery, a big factor. So we'll come right back with the radio setup next. 
All right, so we're gonna do the radio setup now that we have the CG marked and all of the components physically installed with the exception of the elevator control arm is not fully adjusted yet. So of course that's gonna be a lot easier once we get everything energized and the servo snaps to the center of position. Okay, so we're just gonna take off the canopy. Boy, that is beautiful, by the way, if I haven't mentioned it, that is so cool. I really like the pilot on this one. He's got the straps on his arms for the, the seat belt and everything, it's just really cool. Okay, so now, first thing I do when I look inside of a plane like this, I survey the area that I would like to mount my receiver. And then I think about what type of problems I'm gonna have and how the wires land inside of the receiver. So I'm gonna pull out this manual. It's actually somewhat helpful. If you haven't used one of these before, the manual's helpful with doing the forward programming. Also, if you're new to DSMX or Spectrum, um, then keep in mind, you need to have DSMX to communicate with this receiver, but you have to have the forward programming capability to actually program this thing. And so that being said, once you have it set up, then technically I don't know that you need the forward programming, but for all intents and purposes, you're probably gonna need it. So if you have an NX6, you're fine. Now my DX18, I upgraded the firmware and it had forward programming, but I'm not 100% sure on, on some of the other legacy choices, okay? So just keep that in mind when you're making your decision. So uh, that being said, the manual is gonna talk about how to set things up, okay? Now you don't need a bind plug, you can just press the bind button. So keep that in mind when you're positioning the receiver as well. And I'm looking in here and I see this, which is the rudder. There's quite a bit of wire and it looks like really probably the most practical way to do this since they gave us enough lead would be to possibly put the receiver up front, okay? Normally you don't have that much lead coming from everything, but in this plane we do. So I think we should take advantage of it. Um, and it's really, it's kind of a tough call right now because the thing is you've only got a few wires to land here. Where's my, where's my, here it is. This goes to the landing gear up front. So we're gonna use this to plug into the landing gear. And a lot of times what I've found on airplanes is you can try to make the best plans and it just, it doesn't matter. Once you get everything wired up and you land your cables together, then you're gonna have a lot of your decisions made for you. Mm -hmm. So my expectation is the best way to go about doing this is just to start landing things, okay? And then you may have to go back and change some stuff here and there, it's not a big deal. Okay, so now this is labeled um, bind and there's a minus sign, a plus and an S. So signal is inside and then minus is outside and then of course plus is on the middle. So when you've got this color, it's brown is, is negative, yellow is signal and then uh, red is plus. Red is plus on both styles, Futaba and Hextronics. This is a Hextronics color code. Okay, so this says aileron. So I, I don't know what channel's what, but I'm gonna find out really quick by just turning on my transmitter and going to the monitor mode. And I'm just gonna basically look at another model, whatever model I've got in there, which is probably gonna be the most recent one we did, which is the extra. Except the extra doesn't have flaps, so I'll scroll down, go to system setup, disconnect the RF, go to model select, and I'll just go to this one, the FW190, okay? So now that that's pulled up, I can see what channel's what. So obviously we got flaps here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So I can just refer to that. You don't have to see the screen there, camera crew. Okay. But channel one is not to be confused with the bind plug, which we're not gonna be using here. Channel one is the second one down, okay? So in this case, that's ailerons. So one of these said ailerons. Where was that sucker? It was right here. Did it, it didn't drop down in there, did it? That's, there it is, aileron. Okay, so in this case, we want signal to be going to R, right, so far. And you can position this, um, I think either direction like this, or like this, or like this, or like that. And I think you can go like this, 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 or that as well. But I, I don't know what direction we're gonna go. I'm assuming it'll probably end up being mounted like this, just because it'll look the prettiest. Mm -hmm. And that just kind of seems to lend itself to where all the wires are wanting to go anyway, okay? So then gear, and then did you do that in channel two or did you do that on channel, channel two? Well, oh, it's on channel one. It's supposed to be channel two. Yep. Yep. So that's going to go down one more because throttle's on channel one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Then the ESC, 
This is throttle, okay? So this one has the Futaba color code, which is black, red, and white. And don't ask me why they use different color codes, but they do. Just the way it is. Channel three, of course, is gonna be elevator. I don't know if you guys have the same problem I have, but when I'm setting up planes, it will just set off my back sometimes. Just depends on the plane and what the angles are, exactly how high it is and all this. Hey, look at this, that's weird. Oh, oh shoot, dang it, oh man. Aww. They didn't attach that one very good. Actually, they kind of did. Here, camera crew, we hand me the side cutters. This is a really good warning. Um, so, don't cut your hands off, okay, preferably. Yes. But I just don't like seeing that thing. It gets in my way and I, it's annoying. So I'm gonna take that off immediately. Safety first, people. Rudder, rudder. So where does rudder go? Rudder goes to one, two, three, four. Like I said, there's not really any like particular rhyme or reason to this. I'm just sticking them in one at a time as I go. Okay. And don't even worry about AS3X and safe and all that junk yet. You're not gonna need to worry about that for a while, okay? Flaps. Flaps is after gear, so that'd be in the top channel, channel six on this one. If we find out we need eight channels, we'll just go to the other receiver we've got sitting over there. Okay, here's gear. Okay. So gear is going here. Now that breakout board actually splits out for both the left and the right gear. And so there's really only a Y cable that comes back out and then that goes to the steerable nose gear, okay? So I'm just, now that I've got those things landed, I'm just gonna push that down just to kind of tidy things up a little bit. We have quite a bit extra wire on a couple of these lines and I'm not excited about having to deal with that but that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Why is there an extra channel that's not plugged in? Ah, that's because I never actually put in the elevator, okay? So the elevator needs to get plugged in now. The elevator should be on channel three. three. Okay, just kind of looking over my monitor mode there from time to time, and that helps remind me where everything plugs in. Okay, so now also another thing. I hear this from a lot of the new RC pilots out there, and I, I heard somebody today saying that they were about ready to give up because they were having trouble figuring out how to set up a plane or set up any plane. And if you're having that much trouble, just literally take the video and play it and then pause the video until you're done with the thing I just did and then move to the next step. And at the end of the video, you'll have a plane that works as good as mine. Okay, There's, it's not tricks. This is not like movie magic here. We show the whole process, the whole painful process in some <laughs> cases, but this has actually been very smooth. So if you're in that situation, which I know there's only been a few of you who have said things like this over the years. I had one today that I was reading and it's just, it's kind of disappointing because we go through a lot of trouble to show every step. And we also get a lot of grief from people because they wish we'd cut out some of that. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. This is, this channel is, is we're not changing that because people, People that need help need help. People that don't need help have a fast forward button, okay? <laughs> so you see this? I think for now, because we don't know exactly where best that's going to sit, I wonder, we could either do a double-sided tape or we could just like tape it down temporarily. Mm. And I think we're just gonna tape it down temporarily, literally with a piece of tape, okay? so. This will probably be the first plane in many, many, many moons that we haven't had to make some sort of a configuration to lift off the canopy. It came off so easy. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick that little tape there. That just kind of gives me an idea of what I'm targeting so it doesn't flop around every time I do something. Mm, okay. Okay, so now I wanna put this so it's level, but then I need to be mindful of where the nose gear is gonna wanna open, mm. okay? I also wanna be mindful of the levelness of the plane. Um, I don't know exactly when these receivers learn their home position for level relative to the three axis. And as a result, I always like to have it in the position where I think it's gonna be when I start this process, okay? So now at this point, we need to probably go ahead and pause the video, or not pause the video, we're gonna pause the radio installation and we're gonna do the radio setup, okay? So without further ado, let's click. 
We're gonna go all the way down to system setup, click, go to yes, model select, scroll all the way to the bottom, add new model, and you can create. It's gonna create a new model, it takes a second for this to happen. Then you can go to model type and verify you've got the right model type, which you already knew because you just created it. You can go to model name, and this is where you type it in. You can look at the number, that's gonna give you another quick uh, reference to know if you did it right. So this is gonna be the uh, Plotus PC21. So we're gonna start by typing that in. What you do is you move left and right, you click, and then you scroll to the appropriate level, you click again, the box turns back from black to arrow. So in this case, it's Plotus, Plotus, and we'll be back when we have this thing typed in. Okay, so we have it as the Pilatus PC21 1.1 meter. Then you can just hit back and you'll notice that beep, 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 beep. That's one of the two or three weird glitches we've noticed about this. And I, that might not be a glitch at all, but we just have noticed it. Aircraft type, we have to change that to one aileron, one flap. Then don't worry about any of the other assignments for channels until we set up the transmitter. Okay, so the first thing I do is set up the throttle cut. I'm gonna turn it on with this switch, okay? So switch H, and then I'm gonna look in the monitor, and I'm gonna move the stick, and you'll see it's not moving until I have this armed, okay? So now it's disarmed. So now we can go back to the timer. They don't talk about the timer at all, so I'm just gonna leave it at five. I'm gonna put it to one time active, and then I'm gonna go to Ten second countdown, so that's voice, and then expiration tone and vibrate. Tone and vibrate, and then we're gonna have a tone every one minute. Okay, so that's all set. So as soon as we move the throttle up over 25%, it's gonna start the countdown, and then it's gonna go. Okay, so that's cleared. This throttle cut is on, so when I go to monitor mode, okay, now I'm gonna go down to flap system. I'm gonna set it to switch B, that's where I like it. Whoops. I'm gonna to go to inhibit, and then I'm gonna set it to switch B by moving it. And then I'm just gonna, I don't know which way they need to be. So I'm gonna set it to zero, which means the flaps are gonna go like halfway when we first turn on the model. Um, you know what, we'll just throw caution to the wind. We'll just do 50 on both directions. So minus 50 plus 50. And we don't know which way it needs to be, but we'll find out from, this will get us in the ballpark. Okay. And typically your, your, your servos are going to be, um, you know, like on a, on an aileron, this is plus 100, this is minus 100 or vice versa. But on a flap, this is plus 100, this is zero, and this is minus 100 because of the position of the servo. Mm. So just keep that in mind. Elevator correction. I'm just going to dial in something aggressive so we can see it with our eyes. And then we'll be able to make our adjustment if it's going the wrong way. Okay. So when we move that, it's going to adjust. You can see that these two are tied together. We're going to have to change that at some point, but we'll mess with that later. I'm going to set the deployment speed to two seconds. Okay. Now that only pertains to the flap system, not to the elevator. Okay. Just the flaps. And then this ties the flaps and elevators at the same rate in speed. Okay. So if we go over to monitor, 50. you can see it changes. And then this is just the switch condition of auxiliary two, which we are gonna untie auxiliary two from this at some point, but we'll show that later. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we have throttle cut, sticks down, everything is, is where we want it. I'm gonna set up some initial dual rates in Expo. Um, it's not gonna really matter yet, but I'm just gonna set it anyway. So switch F, I'm gonna make all my assignments, 10, 20, and 30, 10, 20, and then the top most exponential, meaning the most dead end sticks, I'm gonna also drop the rates down to like eight, uh, 90. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do for all three. So we'll go from aileron or to elevator, elevator. Then we'll go ahead and set this up the same. So in the lowest setting, we'll have 10%. Then on the middle setting, the, the setting we intend to start with will be at 20. And then in the top setting or the, the most exponential, the most dead end sticks, We'll put it to 30 and then we'll drop the rates down to 90. Okay. Then we're going to go to rudder. We're going to turn this on. Okay. So we're in the, the least amount of expo, the most touchy. Then we're going to do where we expect to start, which is 20. And then we'll go to 30 with rates of 90. Okay. 
So now in my experience, the most critical control surface is elevator in terms of overcorrecting and why you need expo. Okay. Now that also happens to be the most impacted by CG. So the best thing you can do for yourself, and this is this, I'm guilty of this too, is you'll get everything tested. You'll make sure all the control surfaces are going the right direction. And then you'll get the CG wrong by a little bit. Okay. Then you'll take off and it's too pitch sensitive. So you're like, I'm just going to adjust the expo. Well, the thing that's nice about having an overly pitch sensitive plane is not much, but there is a certain amount of it because you can flare the plane a little bit extra, okay? Which is nice on a plane that flies fast. Now this has flaps. They look like they're gonna be very um, effective, but then if you have a plane that flies quick, like a jet, and you wanna be able to bring in and flare so you can use the body of the plane to slow it down like a flap, then you, know, you create more drag when your angle of attack is high and you're coming down. Um, then you can, you can sometimes get away with that. Okay. That would be one ad advantage, but you can kick up the expo significantly more than 20 to start. Like you could go to 30 or 40. And if your plane is a little sluggish, you can usually get it to the ground. Okay. Um, but you can also go half or you can double what you have. That's why I do that. So I start here and with one click of a switch and I don't like to have my thumb off of the throttle. So I get to my flaps here, I get to my gear here, and then if I have safe, I'll have to go up here and I don't usually use safe, I don't depend on safe, um, but that's where I would assign it, okay? But in this case, what I'm mostly concerned about is I wanna be able to change that expo in a pinch, okay? I'm not planning on it being hard to land, I'm planning on giving myself an out. That's what you do when you're flying rear controlled airplanes or real airplanes, really. So the next step we have to do is we have to actually go ahead and energize this circuit so that we can activate all of the rest of the functions through forward programming. So our next step is gonna be pretty much, it goes like this, we have to bind the plane, but we're not worried about safe yet. You have to do that a little bit later. Now this is where you have to maybe do a little bit of reading if you want to do it the easiest way. I'm gonna show you what I'll do. This is the manual that comes with it. All right, so we'll just show you in the manual. If you're doing this for the first time, it might be a good idea to follow along in here. So it lists what everything is hooked up under, okay? It says the ports. So that is the smart port, okay, for port one. And that takes telemetry feedback from a smart ESC if you have an AB and ESC. See, it can send data like voltage and current back to the receiver. The AR631 receiver, throttle port, channel one port only will automatically de detect when a smart compatible ESC is connected. So just, you can read through that on your own. But basically the binding procedure is a little bit different on this than a plug in, uh, pl well, than a bind and fly because we have to get it in established first before we can set up all the rest of the stuff in forward programming, okay? So this is, you just eventually get back to the initial setup here, okay? So like on page six. Verify the transmitter is updated to the latest Spectrum Airware software to take advantage of the forward programming. See your transmitter manual for updating instructions. On the NX6, we have Wi-Fi, so you can actually use Wi-Fi to update directly to it. If you have one of the older models, then you can put it onto a flash drive, or excuse me, a, um, you can put it onto a SD card and then slide the SD card in and then read it from there. Okay, so complete the airplane setup. Okay, so install the receiver in your plane, bind the receiver to your transmitter, and then complete the setup. So I wanted to show you guys that, and then over here on page seven, it starts going through all the setup, okay? It seems overwhelming because there's so many pages, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it's actually quite accidental. You'll end up with everything set up, or you can just follow what I do. So at this point, throttle cuts on, the stick is down, I cleared the timer, I have this thing now off. There's only one time I don't like this type of button, and that is when I go to turn this off and turn it back on in a video because you guys are waiting and watching and so it makes me nervous and I sometimes hold this button too long and it, it does weird things as a result. It doesn't, I don't know that there's a certain designated time that you have to hold it before it starts shutting down and I don't always have the wherewithal to be able to see and pay attention to that. 
So we'll start with the 2700 milliamp pack. We're just gonna slide this in. It's not like there's anything special here. You just, you don't need, even need to film this necessarily. I'm just putting it down. Now this ESC, you see what's happened to the receiver? It's moving. It's just sliding around on me, that's all, okay? So because it's sliding around, I just basically wanna make sure that that's gonna stay put because I do want that to be positionally true for where it's gonna be. And I'm kind of thinking it might be better to hold it down with more tape at oh, this point. Okay. Just because I needed it to not flop around. Then we got a little bit interrupted there. So we're just gonna make sure that this thing holds steady, okay? Now again, we'll come back with some 3M double-sided tape or something like that or hot glue or whatever, whatever meets our fancy at that point. But for now, I just need to make sure that it holds still, okay, while we're doing the setup, okay? So I want that flat and I want that approximately where it's gonna end up. And then I can just kind of tuck this antenna in here so it's kind of out of the way and it won't cause a problem, okay? So now the next step is we're gonna plug in the battery. Okay, the transmitter is off. Now to plug in one of these IC3s into an XT60, you kind of have to roll this back tight corner here. And what'll happen is that'll go down into there and then you can guide the other round one in, okay? It's kind of hard to get in, but it'll go, okay? Make sure your plane is level. Then while pressing this button, you'll hear the ESC. Camera crew, you need to move. See, right here. So I'm gonna press that button and then it starts fast flashing. When that starts fast flashing, now I can do this. Okay, so it's coming on, it's binding. You can let go, secure the plane. You'll notice the flaps went down to the middle like we said they would. Now it's auto configging. That's gonna basically set up some of the basics. Okay, so now elevator is working the wrong direction, rudder is working, ailerons are working, flaps are working. So we basically have the plane half set up, okay? Throttle has not been tested, that's where I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna hold and secure the plane and I'm gonna move the stick, it does not turn on, that's what we want. Now I'm gonna take off the throttle cut while holding. Okay, throttle cuts on and it's tested again. By the way, there was a pretty significant amount of vibration on that so we'll wanna address that at some point but we're not quite there yet. So throttle cuts on and it is tested, we know that we should be okay and safe now. Generally what I do at this point is I would turn off the system and then turn it back on just to make sure we're going to not have a problem. So the way you de-energize this is to just unplug the battery. This is just basically something I've learned from years ago. It will help cover your tail, okay? I'm gonna turn the transmitter back on just like I would if I was doing a normal um, flying thing. See, this is what I'm talking about. You have to press and hold that long enough to wake it up. Okay, so now it's on, throttle sticks down, throttle cuts on, all the switches are in their neutral positions. Now I'm gonna just secure this plane with my elbow, make sure my body is not gonna get cut if it would start turning on, it should not. Okay, so it's plugged in. And I was just repositioning, I bumped the transmitter or the receiver. Okay, so everything is armed. Now I'm gonna test throttle. Everything is working in terms of throttle cut. So now let's look at our control channels first. Elevator's going backward, rudder's going correct. Ailerons are also going backward. Flaps are going the right direction. So let's go down to the flap system right now. We'll change that to minus 100. You'll notice that they went up. See how they're not all the way at the home position? And then that's down. Okay, good enough. Looks pretty good. In fact, I would say for takeoff, I want this to also be up a little bit. I would say probably 25. Okay, so we get about a little bit more to go up. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Go up to servo setup. Let's go to the uh, flap travel. See how it says 100? See what's happening to the flaps? Now they're collapsed all the way. So I would go to 120. And I'm just looking at the surface here and here. So there you go. And there you go, sweet. Okay, so now we can go back out. We'll go back down to flap system. And I want to change this to minus 130 or 35. 
So you get a little bit of deployment, and then you get the full deployment for a little extra braking effect from extra drag. Okay, ailerons are going backward. Elevator is going backward. So I'm just gonna go in here, servo setup, travel, reverse. Elevator's reversed, now it's going correct. And we also need to do the mechanical trim and adjustment on the clevis for that. The rudder is going the correct direction. We need to check landing gear here in a minute too. And then ailerons, we're gonna reverse as well. Okay, so ailerons left, ailerons right, elevator up, elevator down, rudder left, rudder right, okay? So now the last thing we need to test in terms of controls is gonna be the gear. So I am gonna just be real careful to make sure I've got clearances, which I do. And you wanna try to give them a shot of this here, camera crew. Mm -hmm. I'll tip the plane on its side so we can see nice. Okay, so here goes gear. Oh, that is so cool. It's even in the right position, except I got it backward actually. So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna go to servo setup, travel, reverse, gear, switch it. Okay, so the gear's down. Gears up, gears down, okay? So now, I wanna look at these gear real quick because it's the first time I'm getting, a, getting my eyes on them. Wow, those things are pretty. That is really cool. Those are hard wheels though. Real hard wheels. Super cool. No lights on there, but they look really detailed. I love that landing gear. That is so pretty. Flaps down. That is just gorgeous. Okay, gear going back up. These doors seem to be very effective. Mm -hmm. So far, very happy with the way everything is functioning. I'm laying that down so that if I were to open the gear, we have no interference, okay? So now that we have everything more or less working, let's get the elevator done. Now there's not a right order and a wrong order. At this point, it's just a lot of little things need to be done. So I'm just gonna throw these wires inside loose they're not buttoned up, they're not, they're not tidy at all. But my objective here is not to have that done, it's just the objective is to keep those wires from being a problem, okay? Because at this point, I need to, which side is it on? It's on the other side. Yep. I need to basically adjust this for mechanically centering the surface. Now let's show from the side what's going on here. Do you see how this is down? When I pull back on the stick, that's all the way up. When I push down on the stick, that's all the way down. That's where it needs to be. Look how much output we have in the monitor mode. See, that's if I were to trim that, I would have 21% of my um, throw used up just to get it centered. Okay, so that's why this is important. But also, look at this. See how that's slightly forward? We might be able to fix that here as opposed to here. Because you can either screw this in to... Um, pull it down, or you can screw this out to push the elevator up, or you can unscrew this, and you can actually fix that another way, and I'm gonna show you that right now. It's not any sort of mystery. We're gonna take off the control horn and just move it over one set of teeth. Okay, so I'm gonna support this with my, my finger. Oh. I'm gonna turn the flash on. Nope, that screwdriver didn't work. Is it too? Too thick. Too big. Too thick, we'll see if this other one works. Okay, so we're gonna, yep, that. So we're gonna loosen this, let that come out just like so. Okay, I found it. Then when we pull that off, we'll just kind of basically look over here now from the side. See how I'm centering that up? Once I have that centered, I'm gonna come back and try to snap that on there. I'm gonna go just a little bit too far. And you're like, but Brian, why would you do that? Because now I can screw this device, this clevis, I can screw that on more. Mm. If you loosen it, eventually you'll run out of threads that actually hold it onto the, mm -hmm. the control surface or to the control linkage. Okay, so remember we didn't snap this earlier so we didn't have to fight it. So I'll just pull that down and then I can support this so I don't break it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably about to where the threads are gone. And you can see we have plenty of threads. We probably could have done that either way. So, oh, I did overshoot a little bit, it looks like. Yep, yeah. overshot by about two, one, two halves. 
course that just came off too, so that's sort of undermined my efforts a little bit. Okay, so that's really close to, really close to perfect. I would say I might need to go out half a turn, okay? So half a turn out. Okay, so half a turn out means that the, the key is in the opposite side. I kind of almost feel like I'd like to have a little bit more elevator, but um, we'll see. If I need more elevator output, I'll go to another hole, okay? So now that we have things sort of buttoned up where we think we need them, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this screw in here. Okay, that's gonna tighten in nicely. And then I'm gonna snap this. Now it's snapped and I can slide this ring down. This piece of, uh, excuse me, that's a fuel tube. And then the elevator goes up and the elevator goes down. Where it goes left and right, retracts come down. Oops. See, I hit the gear door that time, guys. So let's try this again. And the steerable nose gear goes in the correct direction as the rudder channel. So everything is working right now. So this is the part where we go ahead and basically start setting up the receiver for AS3X and SAFE. And so what I'm actually gonna do at this point is I'm gonna tidy up wiring because I do want everything to be where it's gonna be right now. So throttle cut is on, it's been triple confirmed. Oh, also at this point, you, can, you should be able to scroll over and see telemetry, okay? I'm just seeing if anything is already assigned. Nope, good. Receiver pack voltage, but we don't have um, individual cell voltages. Now you would get that if you had an avian receiver in here. So if you decided to upgrade the receiver, you could do that, but again, I don't really see any reason why you would necessarily have to do that. So pull off the canopy. Now at this point, we don't need this thing energized to do this step, so I'm gonna actually, well, yeah, we don't need it. We know, where the, we know where the battery lead needs to end up basically going, so we know kind of approximately where we want things. So now at this point, I need to just double check. This ESC is flopping around in here too. I'm not crazy about that, so I'll probably take a little double-sided tape or something and see if I can stick that somewhere just to kind of get it tidied up. Then obviously all these wires, we wanna tidy those up. It's not very hard to do so. Looks like that's gonna end up being a really long wire. And of course it's gonna be unfavorable to have so much extra wire. And I don't want it to be tangled up. So I'm gonna basically go under and through. And make sure that we get it. This is just basically cable management 101. So I don't know that's gonna be exceptionally exciting. I have found that the China glue being that it's a contact adhesive, you wouldn't think about using China glue to hold things together, but it does kind of work nice for some of this stuff. Also, you can use electrical tape and you can go as simple as regular tape if you really want to cheapskate out. And all, all you have to do is basically just tape it on like that. I mean, it's, there's a million different ways to skin this cat, and that's gonna prevent that thing from coming out accidentally. If you crash, it's gonna come out, potentially. But if you crashed, at that point, you're gonna have to evaluate everything. So now back here, we've got the rudder servo and the elevator servo, and I want to secure these wires down so that they don't get tangled up in the control surface as it actuates, okay? Now, this is not a, this is not a matter of you know, trying to make the cables pretty. This is a matter of keeping the plane from crashing, okay? Now, typically, you're not gonna tend to crash a plane because a wire touches one of these linkages. But what's gonna happen is it can bind up here if it gets tangled into this area here, okay? So if it gets tightened up around there, that's a problem, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of pick a path that makes sense to me. And I'm just gonna kind of tape these things down. Again, this is, this, is, this is a really highly subjective area of the video. I realize that. Some of you guys do things a little bit different than I do. 
Some people do it a lot nicer. Some people do a really, really bad job of this. Um, but cable management is, it is kind of an important part of the whole situation. Okay, so I'm gonna unplug the throttle, the ESC wire. By the way, that prop is very sharp, so be careful. And that's true of the props on the EC1500, incidentally, too. Um, I had mentioned that they, they looked a lot alike. Well, they're both really sharp. Like sharp, like cut you sharp, not sharp, like nice looking. Grandpa. Well, they also look nice. They also look nice. But they are. But they're sharp, like sharp. slice you open and send you to the hospital sharp. And also cut through the air. Okay, so I am thinking that we'll probably go ahead and put that there. You know what? We're doing it. We did this on another plane the other day and it just, well, the only thing I'm concerned about is that this is at a bit of an angle. I'd really like to have it true with the, the plane, but I don't know that that's totally necessary. It just would be kind of nice if it was. See how this is at a little bit of a down angle? Yeah. I wonder if it'd be better if we just used a little. Okay, so I'm gonna go get some double-sided tape. I'll be right back. So we just got 3M tape here. I'm gonna cut off a little bit of it. Just enough for the, the bottom of this device. But then I'm actually gonna trim it down a little bit. Because what I wanna do is I wanna try to make it stand up and be somewhat level with the plane. And that's the important factor that I'm trying to get right now. So typically, and by the way, you guys are probably wondering, that's a huge roll of 3M tape. Yes, I know. I got that as a gift. Okay, so you see this? See how this is nothing, something, something more? Mm -hmm. My whole plan is to stair step it so that I can make up for some of that angle and it might not be quite enough. I might have to do yet a little bit more, okay? And once we're all said and done with this, if it's worse, nice, I might go ahead and do a little hot glue to hold that in further, furthermore. Okay, so now I'm just trying to center it and I'm just pushing it down. And believe me guys, I've seen plenty of bind and fly planes that are halfway, you know, I would say they're half as well attached as this. So I think we're probably okay there. And that does look plenty good. It's not, it's not absolutely perfectly square though. If I went one more step, I feel like it would be, it would be better. So let's try that. One more of your little skinny steps at the back. I think so. I mean, we'll find out if that's enough. Mm -hmm. If it's not enough, then I'll, I'll have to get a little bit more aggressive. I might've cut that a little bit too thick too. Okay, so like I said, this might not be enough. Just, you're fine there. Okay. Oh, I'm not quite centered. I'm trying to get it centered. And you can indicate what position this is in the Ford programming, so, okay. Do you guys see what I'm doing here? Like if you were to imagine along the side of the plane, you see how that's going still just up a little bit? I wanna to try to bring that level and true now, I, again, I don't think you actually have to make it level and true. I just want it to be that way because I feel like I'm gonna have the best chance at success if it is level and true with the length of the plane, okay? Um, can you mount it at a slight angle? I know for a fact that some of my AR636As are at a slight angle, but I also know for a fact that some of my receivers in the past on my, my bind and fly planes have had a bit of a, they fly at a bit of a crab, and I'm trying to avoid that. Mm -hmm. I wanna be able to rule this out as a possible suspect before we even run into the suspect, you know? The smaller you cut the 3M tape, the harder it is to work with, that's for darn sure. I've learned that over the years, and yet I keep doing it. So you can see that just makes a wedge, so it's gonna help me make up for some of this angle. Okay, that's gotta be really close. Let's double check. Yeah, that's, I'm just gonna call it. That's good enough. 
Okay, so now the next thing we'll do is we'll actually use a little bit of hot glue to secure that in place. And I'll just stitch it into place on either side. Now, let's also figure out this antenna real quick too while we're at it. Um, let's look on the side of this canopy. The side of the canopy needs to dive in here and it creates some of the structural integrity of the plane. So what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna put this here probably. I don't want it to be right where the battery is, but this is, let's just be honest, it's not gonna be a big deal. It's not gonna be a big issue. So I have an idea that's gonna work really nice for this. I'm gonna get something that's small enough that I can reach in there and poke through, because I don't wanna cut, I don't wanna cut from above. I wanna actually slip, I think I'm gonna use a toothpick for this. And then that's gonna give me a way to feed the antenna and then I don't have to do anything in terms of securing it otherwise. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm just gonna take this. That's gonna be hard to do without a pair of pliers, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably gonna break. So if I hold this with a pair of pliers like this, okay? So I got it secure like this. Then I can get my fingers in and I can poke laterally like that. And then I can take and slide this antenna through. Look at that, how beautiful that is, guys. So pretty. Nice. See, worked out pretty good. Okay, cool, so that's taken care of. Um, and I'm just gonna secure the antenna with one little piece of tape in one spot, way up here. And that's all the more that's necessary, okay? So just one piece of tape. Eh, I might do one more piece of tape up on the side because that'll hold everything secure. Again, that's, that's all the more you need. It's not a big deal. If it comes out of there, it's not like it's gonna stop working. Okay, this isn't a carbon, fi uh, carbon fiber fuselage, so. All right, so now let's talk about these wires. Obviously, there's quite a bit of excess length here. And okay, so this one's not taped to secure, and that's okay, because it's probably not necessary. Okay, so I'm just gonna tape that to secure because that is the rudder, one of the primary flight control surfaces. I don't want that to come undone. And you saw how easy that tried to back out. Again, I've got hot glue coming in a few minutes, so I would say this tape is probably not the, the best way to do it, but it's the easiest way right this second. And I'm, I feel like that's pretty strong. You're not ever gonna have a time where it's yanked on that hard to unplug, okay? Because I, I can't make it unplug easily. So I'm not gonna worry about that anymore, it's done. The big thing is I wanna make sure I don't have to trip over those wires every time I'm working to try to put in the uh, battery, essentially. And that's what I'm trying to avoid right now, is just fighting with these things, okay? So these wires here, it'd be nice to just tuck those down. But you see I've got one wire that's kinda of out on its, on its own, uh, it's this one. Okay, so that one, that one I can now unplug. And see, you just kind of have to handle this one wire at a time, folks. It's not like there's some solution that's correct. It's, it, you know, there's a million ways to skin this cat, you know. And um, so I'm just gonna push that so it's flat. And once I have that somewhat where it needs to be, I come up here. Now this has this retainer clip on it, which is kind of handy and push that up and make sure it clips, and it did, okay? Then I can just more or less stuff that stuff down there, okay? So if I had a small piece of foam, then you could, you could take and stuff that foam into this hole too, and that would hold all these wires neatly into their little cavity, okay? But one thing I've learned about cable management in these smaller planes is that sometimes it's less is more. If you tuck that in there, the first time you need to get in there to fix something, you're gonna thank yourself for not having a million zip ties on that, okay? And then this here, I'll just put one single piece of tape and it's gonna be very simple. And why is it that retracts always have the smallest, crappiest wires? I just don't understand that. They carry more current than many of these servos. I think the idea is they're not gonna, the duration of time that the current is applied through those wires is very low, okay? But that's like, I mean, you don't want anything to fail on a plane, but gear to fail. Well, yeah, if, I mean, if, especially if you're a human and you're in it. Yes. 
But, um, but this is like a pretend one. I mean, it's real, just small, right? That's what we say in the radio control community. <laughs> it's real, just It's small. real, just small. Just, you telling yourself that? So then this, this is where the rudder goes. So I'm gonna actually try to tuck that down into the same spot because it's nice to, to have everything kind of tidied in the same spot if possible. Just make sure you don't unplug any of your other wires. And then you can see where that goes up over that rib here where my index finger is touching. I'm gonna try to tape this again. Again, we're just trying to kind of contain and control these wires so that they're not constantly uh, being a struggle, okay? And so I stuck that wire to the tape and then I used the tape to secure it, okay? And it's kind of flopping free still. That's always bad. You, you don't necessarily want it flopping free all the time. Okay, so I just threw another piece of tape on there. Sometimes the mold release on this EPO will make it a real pain in the neck to get uh, cables to behave. In this case, I haven't felt it was especially difficult, but it can get to be in that way. Okay, so then we have this one wire that comes from the ESC. And it'd be kind of nice. It seems like, what's this one here? I got to figure out what to do with that one. Ah, shoot. Did I? Yeah, I did. Dang it. You see what happened? Okay, so I'm going to unplug this again for the third time. And this one needed to tape down with the other one, and I just missed it. Oh. So not a big deal. I'll literally tape it on top of the tape from the other one, okay? So that's really simple stuff. Again, there's certain parts of this that just, you know, it's not like there's some right and wrong way. If you add an extra gram worth of weight to your airplane, it's, it's still gonna fly fine. Okay, folks, I promise. Now, if you're going for some like ultra endurance competition, or you're trying to like thermal this thing to China from central Iowa, then yeah, you might wanna not use tape like this. And you might wanna shorten every one of your wires too to save weight too. Okay, so you see how nice that looks? Everything just kind of gets where it's going without tripping over itself, with the exception of the ESC. This is going to be the last one. And this one, I'm thinking, I'm kind of feeling like this might make sense to just have a bundle, but I'm not sure yet. It kind of depends on how much I can get away with right there. It'd be nice to have that in a nice, neat bundle. Yeah, because then almost everything is out of the way. Yep. I know, that's why you, some people have said they like watching people do uh, cable management. And I, I don't know if that's true or if they're just, you know, being nice or what the deal is, or if they just like literally have OCD tendencies like myself. And so they want to watch somebody else do it. It's kind of funny because it is, I mean, I find the same thing to be sort of strangely satisfying to watch somebody else work hard and me not have to do it. <laughs> It is strange. That's why I married you. <laughs> Watch somebody else work hard and not have to do it. Well, you get to film it. But I think you're right because I feel like in your early days, you tried to plan ahead a lot and it just- It just always so it's falls just apart. And it never, really, it never really adds up to any additional, I mean, look how nice everything looks. Yeah. And it, I mean, we spent 10 minutes doing it. It's not like we went out of our way, especially to do it. But it's just one step at a time. You have to take, you know, how do you eat an elephant? Well, I wouldn't, but one well, bite at a time. Thank you. That's right. That's the answer. Right. Okay. So now this <laughs> is going to be, see, I'm just torn on that throttle wire. I, th I feel like if I did it better, I could probably bring that down to the ground. But honestly, we've got this bundle that kind of has to be, uh, you know, tolerated to a certain extent, no matter what you do, because like, how else are you going to get that stuff disappeared? You know, it's just the nature of the beast. You're going to have some wire. Yeah. We could have this go over to the other side too. I think we're going to be okay though. I would say at this point, maybe it's time for a little bit of hot glue action. Now I could also feed this under, but my fear is that that's got enough strength that it could actually yank mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. It'd be kind of nice if I could have this one big tie that holds everything together, but I just don't even know where I would apply the, the zip tie, you know? Probably around here, I would assume. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can redo this a little teeny bit, because it, it would be kind of nice if I could get that that one wire. See, now the OCD is kicking in, camera crew. Mm -hmm. 
Did you notice I when that happened? Yep. Okay, so that, now I've got one zip tie I need to get and then side cutters. And, and I usually say like one zip tie and then like I get off camera and she's like, stop, well, we'll stop wasting zip ties. What do you think those things are free, Brian? So see this? Okay. Okay. So, so of course I, I didn't zip tie that one, but there's not really anywhere for that to tie with. Okay. So, like I said, now I am in a position where I can go ahead and hot glue that to secure it in position, okay? And there's only one zip tie that has to be cut off in the event of a significant repair or whatever, okay? I'm not fond of that. See how that, that goes under and this goes over? Man, that would have been nice if I would have caught that before I zip tied stuff. Let's see if I can fix it still. Ooh. No, I, I think I can still, cause I'll just take this and tuck it under like this. Okay, just like that. And then it twisted, of course. See how it twisted? That was so beautiful prior to my OCD kicking in. Okay. Now I'm gonna undo my tape. And see, this is one of the reasons why if you secure these with tape, it is kind of nice because you can still technically undo it pretty easy. Just like so. See, you can still get it done, but it's not, it's not like impossible to get it done. If you use hot glue, I find that to be the easiest by far. It's the most effective, um, easiest way to do it. So now I'm going to untwist this like that, and then I'm gonna find the other half of it. Where did it drop, camera crew? I cannot see it. Okay. Really? Oh, it's over here. You couldn't see that. Oh. I couldn't either. I couldn't see it on your hand. Okay, here we go. So now I can straighten that. That's got that half twist on it. Okay. So now, brown to brown. Brown to brown, like this. Let's verify the brown to brown. Yep, okay. It's so funny, because I've literally said that as plugging in wires the wrong way mm -hmm. in previous videos. It's just so funny the way your brain works when you're, when you're filming. Kudos to the pros who film some of the hardest work. Okay, here we go. Get in there. See this, guys? Okay, so once that tucks down in there neatly, and I'm doing this in such a way that I'm not gonna cut the cables with the connectors. Because those connectors are harder and stronger than the wires, so you, it's not impossible that you would damage the cables, okay? So now, options, we have options. So we're gonna pause and come right back. Okay, so, we got two different pieces of foam to protect the foam out of the packaging from this plane. We made sure it was from this plane. So if you get this plane, you'll have something similar. And you see this hole here? I want to I wanna try to plug that hole so that the wires disappear. And this is just a trick I've, I've been able to do on a, some planes, on some planes, but not other planes. It doesn't always work. Um, just because sometimes it doesn't quite fit. And you see how I'm just kind of tucking this in on itself. My hope is to slide that in there and then the pressure will hold it. Um, and I might need to trim this a little bit more, I wonder. Yeah, that's still pretty big. Okay, so I trimmed that down just a little bit because it was too big. And then I'm just gonna kinda see if I can roll it. And once I kinda roll it, then I can just squish this in here. And uh, you just don't wanna plug you don't want to plug an inlet where the air is supposed to go, all right? See, and then that just keeps from being super, super unwieldy. Nice. And it looks nice. And then now that we kind of know approximately where we want everything to be, we can still get at it. And then if you have an accident or something, it's, it's quite easy to get 
it's quite easy to get into there. But as you're plugging in the battery and stuff, you don't have big issues and just show them around the cavity there. And I do have the hot glue gun going, so it's warm. I think we should be okay. Here's a trick too, guys. If you have a hot glue gun, it's plugged in and you can't quite reach. Obviously the best thing to do is to move the plane to where you can reach, but you can generally just unplug the hot glue gun, especially when you're dealing with foam. Because many times you don't want to put it out at full strength. In this case, I'm just gonna move the plane. Okay, let's show the people what we're doing here. So I want this nice and square. This is gonna be its final resting place. And then I'm gonna put the hot glue on the side of the receiver, and then I'm just gonna let it run down, okay? This is not fully hot. It's partially hot. That's, that's kind of a lot of hot glue, okay? Now, I realize that, but it's just, it's just one of those things. Because really, that, that 3M tape is not, not supporting it hardly at all. All it's doing is it's keeping it in position. And then what I'm gonna do is I will use a good old trusty Q-tip to spread around the glue to avoid being severely burned. See how that sets up nicely? And you just get a little surface area and it'll take care of itself, okay? Now some of you are probably thinking, but you're gonna get more vibration through there. Yeah, you probably will. Um, but to be honest, it's a foam plane, you know. You're, you're gonna get a little bit of vibration that carries through the whole structure no matter what you do, okay? So you could, hypothetically let that set up or you could just go straight in which i'm going to go straight in and the camera crew is going to watch out so i can fling the tail to the other side okay and then we're going to do the exact same thing being mindful of gravity because gravity is going to want to pull the hottest glue down so big squish there make sure you don't get it into any of the ports obviously and then once you have that allocated on the side then you can go back to it with your q-tip see how it's wanting to wrap around the edge that's fine i'll just smear that i'll just give it a smear and then this i'm just going to pull up the side like this and then i'm going to take there's quite a bit of excess in there you see that mm -hmm. that's too much okay so now i'm going to actually not waste this too just because i'm such a cheap skate <laughs> and I'm gonna come over here and show the people what I'm smearing. I'm smearing it here so that I can smear this end and it will be smeared on all three sides. And you're like, Brian, it's four-sided. That's true. Camera crew, I'm gonna try to get in here and smear the front. And actually I'm gonna smear it straight on with this thing, okay? So you see this? I'm just gonna go right smear. See, all I did was I just smeared right on there that's gonna keep the wires from easily pulling, but if you need to get into those, it will be quite easy too, because you can just yank out the bundle and then separate them as you need. Okay, so now the last thing I'm gonna do, very simply put, is I'm just gonna do a little bit more schmear here. A little bit of schmear. Okay, so there you have it, guys. That is the high-tech installation instructions. I'm sure Rich would cringe if he was watching this. And that's, and that's how you do it on a foamy, guys. It's not uh, exactly rocket science. You can uh, take it from there. Now, this is a good way to apply hot glue if you're in a spot where it's kind of hard to get to. So like, for instance, if you wanted to get to here and you don't want to put it, um, you don't want to use tape, if you want to hold down your wires, this is how I would do it, okay? I would just smear right onto there and then I would go up under your wires and just smear it, just smear a little bit. And then stick it down and then lick your finger and then smear. And that's all you gotta do and that will hold your wires, believe it or not, okay? But see, I actually kinda smeared that in a bad way because I kinda wanted these up here. So if you ever change your mind, the thing that's so nice about that is all you have to do is just, it, now it's done and it's gone. And watch this, you can even you can even generally work this stuff off of the foam and you can get that to come right out if mm. you decide you wanna try to lose the weight that you added with the hot glue, okay? So in this case, of course, it's gonna fight me, but that's okay, you get the idea. It's basically, the gist of it is, cable management is, it's kinda, you kinda have to make it your last step 
um, on a plane like this. Otherwise, it's just too much work. So, and we used the foam to help kind of tidy up inside of there. So now that we're done with that, we're gonna clean up and we'll be right back to finish up the forward programming. All right, so we're back for the final step of forward programming here with this uh, Pilatus PC21. And obviously we had our cable management in there. So that's all done. And everything is glued and secured where we want it. We used a bit of hot glue and stuff. Um, so now it's just basically a matter of getting the batteries in and figure in CG and then getting the forward programming. So at this point, it might not be a bad idea to just mark where the battery is gonna go. Mm, okay. So I have been trying to get in the habit of marking somewhere in the plane what the recommended sizes are because we have so many of them now, it's getting hard to keep them straight. So if you wanna come around here so they can see what's going on. Okay, so this, I mentioned this earlier, but this is kind of one of the more like intermediate style Look, the straps feed. If they feed, this is a rare, it's a really good effective strap. If they don't feed, then they might as well not put them in, okay? Yeah, that is so much easier. Thank you, FMS. Now you see that tail, how it's like super long and extra? Just fold it back over on itself and you can tuck it down, okay? It is so much easier when these things feed free. Mm -hmm. If they don't, if they're glued in, you might as well just leave that strap out because they're darn near impossible to use. What plane were we flying earlier today? No, it wasn't today. It was our last one we did. Mm -hmm. I the think it was the, the Dynam. Oh, was it? Yeah. Or no, it was the Extra. Yeah, the yeah. Extra. You couldn't get your hands in there. It was the Extra 300, folks. Yeah, that might actually be good to just leave that down. I'm not sure. So anyway, we're going to... We're just gonna do this temporarily, okay? We're just gonna assume that this is gonna be perfectly centered here, okay? Which, who knows if it is. And I don't even know if we can reach, but we can clearly reach there, so let's just simulate a connected wire, because a connected wire doesn't weigh any different. And that will stay put when we hold this plane upside down. So now we can go ahead and verify our CG, and if, we're, if our placement's satisfactory, then we'll go ahead and mark it. So earlier, kind of at the end of the build, we marked our CG points here. So I'm just gonna put my fingers at the, I would call it 92 and a half millimeters or the center. And we are definitely tail heavy there. We're definitely still tail heavy. So we gotta ride that quite a bit forward. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this canopy off. Well, that's a little bit scary. I hope we didn't hamstring ourselves with the receiver. We probably put it so that the receiver is gonna butt right up against the battery now to get the CG right. Okay, you see that stuff that we put in there? Mm -hmm. It's wanting to fight me a little bit. I'm just pushing it down. Okay, now we're good. So I've got it butted up against the receiver, which is right in the front of this pocket here. And the wires are where the wires are. So now we cross our fingers and hope that we have it nose heavy so we can pull it back <laughs> a little bit. It wouldn't hurt if it was touching the receiver. You just wouldn't want to have batteries surrounding it. Rut row. So I'm on the back hole and it wants to go back and I'm on the front hole and it wants to go back. So basically what that tells me is, now some planes you wanna test with the battery or with the gear down. So that's the only thing that could be a little bit different. Now you could use a bigger battery, but we are still behind the CG with that. So where we located this might end up being a bit of a problem. So we're gonna get creative here real quick before we totally reinvent the wheel. Okay, see how nice that works. Why is it that the battery tray is always in the wrong spot on these planes? I don't know. I feel like, like they don't. They don't test, test it. That. Do you want to try it with the with the leads forward? Or I was going to say with Not the bigger battery. Uh, no, this is the bigger of the two. This is the one that's the oh, bigger. Oh yeah, you have a twenty-four. Okay. So I'm just curious. I mean, just for testing reasons, we're just going to bring it way up here. I know it's kind of goofy because it's probably not totally symmetrically loaded right now, meaning left to right symmetrically. Let's just see if we have that close, okay? Because remember, we're just trying to get a, a feel for where the battery is going to ultimately end up, not trying to make it perfect, okay? And at this point, we could still get away with that, but I could also relocate, I could relocate the, the receiver with some level of certainty. <laughs> now the battery is too tall. Oh. So I got to resituate this a little bit. You want to come up here so they can see? This was too tall. 
I'm gonna actually try to go this way and see if I can, maybe I can just, for now, maybe I can just straddle. That, that does get it quite a bit farther forward. To be honest, I should, have, I should have thought about that, but I just saw how long these wires were and all these wires were relatively short. And I said, this just makes better sense. But, um, but then I'm thinking to myself now, I'm past the CG going this way. So the bigger pack is actually gonna make it more ten tendency to be tail heavy. So I might just try a smaller battery if this doesn't take care of it. And I don't think it will. It was pretty far off. I can also add nose weight, but I'm just not into doing that. On the front holes, it's pretty tail heavy. On the back holes, it's tail heavy. Now, when this nose gear comes out, it's gonna change the CG4 just a little teeny bit, but a little bit of extra stability during landing is not a problem. Um, so what that tells me is now I need to start getting a little bit creative because my next step is gonna have to be to take off that glue and slide this whole receiver forward about an inch, which is fine. It's not the end of the world. I've done stupider things in my life, but let's try this first. And let's just, I mean, I'm not gonna fly it. I don't think I would fly it like this really. And plus I don't think the canopy is gonna go on. Mm -mm, I don't think so either. No, not without carving it. And I'm not gonna carve it to do it wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next step is to try the smaller battery. I'll try coming in like this. And we'll just come all the way up front and then we'll just grab these straps and see if we can, see if we can go ahead and tighten those down. Okay, and again, we're not flying with it, so I don't, it's not like you would absolutely have to have that totally secured. See, I'm just loop this here. So it stays kind of where it would go. Okay, so that's more or less in position. I wanna to try to center it a little bit. So this one zip tie, the, the head of the zip tie here is precluding me from bringing the battery over. So I'm gonna to try to spin that around so it's on the other side. And then I can slide this over. Okay, so that's where that needs to be. And this is where we cross our fingers again, but I think we're probably gonna lose this battle. It should be a bummer. <laughs> I feel like we've been here before a few times. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit tail heavy. I would say if I was five millimeters further on the CG, then I would be okay, but it's still probably on the edge. So what have we learned? What, what we learned was sometimes you get lucky and other times you don't. So unfortunately for us on this one, we picked kind of a bad spot for that receiver, didn't we? Bummer. It's actually a pretty good spot for the receiver. It's just a bad spot in this plane. Mm -hmm. So what needs to happen is now we have to somehow unsecure that and pull it forward. Now we do have some extra leads and things, but um, that's gonna be fun. Cause look, I've got it so secured that I can pick up and handle the plane by the receiver, okay? <laughs> so it, it would have been easier to do that without the hot glue, I'm assuming. Um, okay. But you wanna figure this out before you do the forward programming, right? Yeah, it's better. It's better, yeah. Cause if you have to move things around, because technically I can take this receiver off and I can mount it to the side here too. I can mount it right here. Or I can take this off and mount it over here. You know, mm -hmm. and that would give us the same end result. Like if these wires went through here and then this thing was mounted to the side, it's actually okay there. Um, the biggest problem is now I have to somehow separate this and you feel how strong that is. Yeah, that's That's like really, be. really strong. So mm -hmm. the solution becomes you have to use an X-Acto knife or something of the sort to try to cut it. And an X-Acto knife cutting next to the antenna is where I get um, maybe a little bit more concerned. 
So this is where you use your skills to pay the bills, Brian. So we're cutting, but not cutting too deep. And then this side's gonna be super easy because there's not any wires in the way at all. Okay, so we're just gonna cut, but not too deep, remember? And we're not gonna let it fling out at the end either. So we're gonna have to be ahead of it a little bit. See, just like this. Then I'm gonna come up under that and I'm gonna cut. And then I'm gonna come up under it from the other side and then I'm gonna go down and plunge cut a little teeny bit. I am gonna go into the foam just a hair, okay? Then I'm gonna make my turn. Then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make my turn. Okay. Now I should be able to break that free without too much trouble, but I am gonna lay my knife down because this is always about the time I cut myself. I haven't cut myself on camera lately. It's been kind of a good run. I gotta cut that side, it's not released yet. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here and just go a little bit deeper. It's kind of incredible how strong hot glue is. It's also kind of completely ironic that as soon as you pick up a tool, it's like immediately you need it again because I just put away my hot glue gun. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So now I'm gonna rock this until it pops and I'm gonna hold down really hard on the couch. Okay, so you see how that's separated now? We got the nice angle still and most of the hot glue that's down here could be released if we really cared, but I don't know that it's gonna gain us a ton. I'll see what comes out easily with needle nose pliers. You just call it extra weight? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could, but I'd rather not have extra weight like this. I'd rather have um, extra weight in terms of a battery if I can do it. But you see what's going on here? It's coming off nicely. That's just the tape here. So I have to redo this a little bit. Once you get an edge started, you can peel it out. Okay. So this is where you really hope you mark the CG right after you go through all this trouble. So mm -hmm. there's some of that tape. So now at this point, I think the wise thing to do, we're gonna to try to apply some wisdom from learning through our screw ups on what the best option is, would be to just tentatively hold this to the side for now, because we know about where we'd like it to be. Did you guys hear that? Just an idle. That's what happens when your transmitter's been on for a long time. All you have to do is move a stick and it'll wake it up. But one warning, if it does that and it vibrates strong enough, it'll vibrate off a counter. So you need to be aware of that. Okay, so as we go through our journey of learning what not to do together, I'm just trying to think if I could make that angle, that would, that would not hurt my feelings. It's kind of a, then you'd want end pins instead of this type of pin. And I can actually work off all that hot glue too, but I would say I'm gonna try right now, I'm just gonna try to pull some of that slack up and just try to move it over. I would prefer to have it on the center of the, the plane if we can, okay? So let's just see if we can get it to work here, okay? I'm gonna pull a little bit of slack and then I'm just gonna tuck this down, okay? Because remember, we still have to have the battery over that, bridging that gap, okay? So let's go for the bigger one, because I am pretty sure now that we have things moved, we'll get this positionally right, then we'll re-glue. Okay. Sorry to drag you through this process, folks. We try to get it right on the first time. It doesn't always happen, though. Um, my camera crew will confirm that I'm almost never wrong. <laughs> oh, what was I supposed to say? <laughs> of course, dear. <laughs> Sorry, I'll try to remember next time. Okay, so we have that. Now, CG should be, I'm assuming we'll probably be about right now. So let's try this. Because okay. that's a pretty pretty fair amount 
Yeah, um, you have like the whole FMS logo showing now at the back of the battery tray. Okay. Compared to like where you started. So this is 3200 4S 30C Gen 1 Smart Pack. And I'm just going right to the middle. We're a lot closer than we were, but we're not there yet. Right. We still need to go forward a little bit. Okay. The Smart Packs are a little bit smaller. They are smaller. So that's one thing that's a great problem to have. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. slide this until it's like barely held on by that back strap. I feel like we're so dang close that we, we don't wanna overshoot too much, you know? And then those wires, we will re-secure those down here in a few minutes mm -hmm. when we're done with this. I just, um, I don't wanna break any of these lines, but I also don't wanna tolerate having a giant mess because we went through so much trouble to do nice cable management. Okay. So then at the end of the day, it'd be really nice if I could just make this glue right back down, right where it had been before, you know, only forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so let's pretend that's where it's gonna end up. That was a very small maneuver. I'm not sure if it's enough. Boy, it's like really close. I mean, I feel like you could maybe get away with it, but you're right on the very tail end of, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you're still not quite there. You don't have anywhere to go if it's still not enough. Yeah, exactly. Further forward. And that's, that's where I'm concerned too, is I want to have a little bit more margin for error. Mm -hmm. Or if we fly with a different pack, I want to be able to adjust from there. So we're going to be completely out of that strap now. And let's just see if we get it. We gotta be pretty darn close. I mean, you can technically, I think you can mount it like this. You might even be able to mount it like that, to be honest, but I don't really like that at all. So we're probably not gonna do that. When you're clear out of a strap, that's where I feel like something wasn't. Yeah, right. like why didn't you guys figure this out for us? Hmm? When you were designing the plane and things. Nah, this, I'm not gonna beat them up just quite yet. This is. This is so much easier than some other competitive brands that we review for, so I'm not even gonna complain about it. Where are my center of gravity marks? That's as close as we've been and we're still not quite there, okay? Front hole, definitely tell how heavy. Back hole, we could, we could argue that that's right. So I still feel like we're on the edge of margins. Mm -hmm. Now with a lighter battery, technically you would be Potentially okay there, okay? And we're all the way back here. So I would say, let's just go ahead and throw a caution in the wind and get up there to make it tail heavy. That's probably what we should have done in the first place. And uh, we're gonna have to pull some slack out of those wires too to, to make this work properly. What a pain, sorry guys. Okay, so you can see how far forward we are. We're quite a bit forward. Mm -hmm. It just makes me nervous because now how are we going to fit all this crap in here? All of a sudden we've got a space issue. Yeah. Um, because the antenna, the antenna can easily be re-manipulated. That's not a problem at all. I'm just mostly concerned. I don't even know if I can stick this down now. If you guys had never learned this before, antennas are a, uh, a coax cable. So you don't want to kink them. If you kink a, an antenna wire, you're very likely to break it to the point where it will be um, not working anymore. So be very careful not to do that. I'm just going to pull that antenna out for the moment. But since I have this tape on here, I want to get this tape out of here. Mm. See that tape? And then I had one more piece of tape that was holding it down at one point. It's right here. See, so I can get that out of here the remnants of my first cable management attempt. See, now it makes sense that I would have had the antenna or I would have had the whole receiver back here, but that just really stinks because we went through all the effort to make it fit here and it just didn't for CG. But how would you know that until yeah. you do it? I know, chicken and the egg, which one came first, right? So I'm gonna just drop this in here. I don't know if we can run it that way and I wouldn't probably run it that way anyway. So this is like, an inch out of the back strap. <laughs> Jeez. And I would say that it's still tail heavy at the front 
and it's just barely approaching correct on the, the back set of holes. That's crazy. I know. How pissed are you going to be when we find out it needs to move back? What, the receiver? <laughs> no, the, we had something wrong with our CG mark. Oh. That's going to really irritate you, isn't it? But what's going to be wrong? I don't know. Something that we didn't do right, maybe? I don't know. Maybe the measurement point? Okay, so I'm going to go forward a little bit more even yet. So now we're barely strapped in. This is just getting to ludicrous stages here. But even, okay, so you talked about... Like, so here's the center of gravity. That makes sense. So my battery is riding slightly in front of it. So we finally started impacting change for the front. Okay. And our ESC is also over here too. So it's like if we would have known this, we could have put the ESC on the other side potentially. Right. So, and I can't really put the battery here because it's going to potentially bump the bind button. So we're going to have to get creative about where we locate this now. I think all of the stuff's going to have to go to the back. Totally possible. That's going to be a bummer. It'll probably be the worst, the worst gaff we've had on an FMS yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm on the back hole and it's, I would say that that's good. Okay, on the front hole, I still feel like it's tail heavy. So I'm thinking at this point, I don't know that I can really do a whole lot better than that. And mm -hmm. that just looks weird to me because why would you need to be so far, so far forward, you know? Look how far I am. I'm like all the way up to where it's barely in there. Yeah. That just doesn't make sense to me. Now, granted, this thing sitting up here will add a little bit of weight to the nose, but hardly any. But if you put all the receiver and the wires at the back, you're eh, going to... it's barely any. I mean, it's definitely something, but it's not that much. So then this here, I just need to basically, for the moment, I just need to get that out of the way. So I can fiddle with my transmitter and receiver combo. Okay, so you see this? If that were to end up here on the side, that would be acceptable. I'm going to have to take all my... 3M tape and stuff off the bottom because I got it at an angle now, mm -hmm. you see? Because that also precludes us from fitting the battery because the nature of all these wires coming right. out at the side. But that being on the side of the plane is actually okay. The canopy still goes on. We don't have a gap here, do we? No, we don't no. have a gap. Ouch. Okay, so I would say that's good now. See, it's got a little bit of a nose down. And then on the back hole, it's, it's, it's still like acceptable, okay? So that, that's where it goes. So now we have to figure out how to deal with that. <laughs> Boy, I wish I would have realized that in time, but it was kind of too late, I guess, for us because we had already made up our mind on certain things. So now at this point, I guess I really, what I need to do is I need to come in here and peel all this, this glue off and we'll come right back, okay? Okay, so we know the battery needs to go way up here. So what I did was I, I took all that glue off except for the little bit around the antenna for security reasons. I don't wanna break it off. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna basically ensure that all my wires are intact and then I'm gonna just glue it right there, okay? So then the antenna can go back. So our nice little design where we had the antenna passing through, it's just gonna go over here instead, okay? So that should work out fine. It should be no problem. We have plenty of room for the canopy to get dropped on there. And then all I did was I just pulled this little bit, this little cover out. And all we're gonna do is just relocate that once we get the receiver glued to the side here, to the side wall here, okay? So we're just gonna glue it right there and we're gonna hope for the best and we're gonna glue it in line so that it's not following this contour, but it's following the contour of the, you know, the bottom of the plane, but it's pulled all the way to the top. So it clears the battery the best, okay? So now we can just go slather, all the way on the edge to where it gets to the plastic. And then we'll just go back and forth a couple of times. And then we'll just slather that right in there. And then we just wanna kinda of keep it in true with the airplane, okay? Now we'll set that in forward programming, it should be no problem, okay? So we're just gonna let that sit for a second. The only thing you can't do is you can't mount it at odd angles, okay? So that's why before when we were on this angle, we built up the back so it was like this, so it's flat. Okay, this thing, if you imagine from the side, there's a contour like this on the plane. So we're just trying to get it square so that it's not following that contour. That can actually cause the airplane to fly at an angle, okay? You don't want that, it'll look stupid. But you can set what, what direction you want all this stuff to set, okay? So now let's come back over here so they can see what's going on, camera crew. 
Now I need to just get a little bit of glue in these couple of different spots. Sorry, it's hot glue. I gotta work so quick mm -hmm. to get it to work, you know. Lick your finger, spread it down, spread it down. Okay, and so all that we're doing there is we're just getting these two wires so that they're gonna behave when the, when the battery's wanting to go in and out here, okay? So that we can secure the battery without having to constantly fight all the leads, you know? And same thing here with this chunk. We'll just probably end up tucking this down here. And I, I don't like to do this, but I'm gonna do it on this plane just because the nature of where everything ended up, it's just in a tight spot. And so as a result, I'm gonna push everything into that hot glue and I'm just gonna hold it tight for a minute. And then that's just gonna basically hold that stuff in place. And then when we have to put the battery in and out each time that we go to fly, it's not gonna be a huge struggle, okay? But we're also protecting this connection here. We're not yanking them out while we do this. We are protecting and relieving the stress on those pins, okay? So we're in protecting that first and then, you know, cause we've got a pretty good bulge here still. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's, that's set up. So now when you let go, it should just stay there. I'm just getting all the strings onto my hands. And then you can see all this stuff is nice and tidy. And guys, I am still a little bit baffled by how like horribly the center of gravity worked out on this. I'm still a little bit weirded out, but to be honest with you now, if we're wrong, we can still slide back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm always leery about that when I have a situation like that come up. Okay. So this is actually thicker on this half and it's thinner over here. Okay. Because of the way that rolled up. So I'm gonna actually rotate it. So it's like this. Actually, I kind of need to kind of need to thin it up on this side. So I'm just going to pop some of those cells like this. Okay. Now we're going to roll that back up how to roll a foam filled cylinder with Brian Phillips RC. Hey, we could have a special guest. Our six year old loves folding and rolling things. That's right. <laughs> she does. She could have done it for you. Okay. So now I'm just getting all those wires tucked in there. Of course, we're going to want to make sure to test everything and vet everything really pretty significantly. Okay. So now when we put our battery in, we've got a nice, place for it to slide across. You don't have to worry about where all the wires are going to be popping out in every which way. <sighs> okay. So thank you guys for enduring with us. This is in there totally solid. I could probably lift up the plane by it. So at this point, I'm just going to go for good measure. Just one extra little stripe of glue. And I'm just going to blow it over there. I didn't bring a Q-tip over a camera crew. So I have to get it. We put all our stuff away. That's probably about the time we thought we were done. Okay, here we go. So we'll just do that. And then we're just gonna run down the face of it as well. And this is just gonna be what I would call for good measure, okay? So there's all the way along the back and then there's two surfaces. It's gonna be really hard to get on the bottom and not make a huge mess. And we already glued into this spot, so we're gonna leave that as it is. All right, so did I, do I have anything else I need to glue here before I put all the glue away? See these wires? I don't want to catch those when I'm playing with the batteries. It'd be nice if I could control that a little better, you know? Because mm. if you yank that out, it's going to be a mess. I have actually yanked that particular wire out in planes before. Okay, here's another trick. Since we did some slathering earlier, let's do some more slathering now. So we're just going to slather that glue on there and then I'm just going to work it, work it. Mm, 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 mm. Right like that. There you go. Okay. And then push this down nice and tight. It cooled too much for the second half. So we got to do a little bit more slatherage. Yes, that is a thing. Slatherage. Just like that guys. Very simple. Okay. And then throw that thing away. All right. Now let's load the battery. Let's simulate loading the battery. And by simulating, I mean, we're going to actually do it. I was going to say, I'm going to actually do it. So now, oh, we need to do the antenna thing. The antenna thing was 
by using... Did we already bring the pliers over there, camera crew? Yes, I, we did. You did? Yeah. But did you already get a toothpick? No, I didn't. Thank you, camera crew. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do again. I already showed this earlier. We're just gonna grab this like that. And I can't quite fit that way, so we're gonna go over here. You gotta get this right at the, right at the tip of the pliers. And then we're just gonna feed that through. You wanna give the guys a shot of actually what's going on inside of here? I think. Can they see inside? Yeah. How about over here? No, because then your hands are in the way. How about over here? Okay, you see? And then I'm just stabbing it, but I can, I can control it with force, see? And then once that hole's created, then all you have to do is just feed this antenna through, just like this and pop that through, and then pop that through, and see how nice and clean that worked out. And you don't have to glue it at all, because if you glue those things, you can actually screw up the cables. So let's glue it. I'm just gonna do a little bit on the tip of this, and then that's all I'm gonna do, just to hold it in place. Lick the finger, spread it out. Hold your finger there, make sure it's set, okay? So now that's not gonna be prone to popping off all the time. All right. Now this strap, which at this point we believe to be useless, I'm just gonna basically stick it down like this. So it's kind of more or less out of the way. And then if we find out on the Maiden that it isn't useless, we'll have it available for our use. Okay, so we're gonna put this in. We're gonna actually slide, slide this around quite a bit. And we're gonna push that. Now you gotta be like really pulling tight on that thing because you only have one strap working for you. Okay, kinda wish they'd put the slit like three inches up or, you know, so there's lots of material to hang on to but nobody does it that way. You remember when we were joking about using, we were getting ready for the Ford programming? Do you remember that joke earlier? <laughs> about like hour ago, an hour ago. Sorry guys, this is supposed to be simple cable management, but it turned out to be um, typical Dynam cable management. Yeah, no kidding, what happened? The cable management was my fault, but the CG thing is still just weird to me. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how we can be that far off on the CG. It seems to me like it's maybe in a bad spot. Like we either marked it wrong or it is wrong. Or the battery tray is wrong to indicate where to start. Nah. Well, that's not the first time that's happened though. We see that a lot actually. Or the batteries are a lot lighter now. But even still, it's weird that the CG's here and the battery tray is centered here. Right. Because normally your, your battery is going to be centered right over your center of gravity because that's your fuel source. Okay. Oh yeah. Look at that. Gorgeous. Okay. So it's tail heavy on the front hole and on the back hole, it's somewhat nose heavy. That's exactly what I want. Okay. So now we are legitimately going to look at forward programming right now. So Ford programming is obviously done from the transmitter. And this is where you set up safe and AS3X if you're gonna use them. So I just need to get this stuff out of the way so that I don't knock it over violently with my airplane. If you haven't done Ford programming before, it's not hard, but it is a little bit different if you've never done it yet, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is obviously have the plane all set up for the controls Make sure they're going, I recommend putting the plane so that its tail is towards you so you can easily uh, manipulate control surfaces and make sure they're going in the right direction, okay? So we're gonna pop the canopy, plug in the battery, throttle cut is on and down and it's gonna be, we've already confirmed that that should be good, okay? This is a little bit easier to plug in up here. Oh, the XT60 to IC3 is not very fun. Okay, so it's initiated just like usual. 
nothing special, nothing fancy there. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna control the plane and test the throttle. We're safe. We are gonna make sure that our gear doors are safe in case the gear would sequence. And they sequence just fine. And you guys see what I'm talking about. The nose gear goes up here, okay? This is the stowed position. This is the out position. So that's gonna change your center of gravity a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit, okay? Take off flaps, landing flaps. Aileron roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, roll left, or uh, yaw left, excuse me, yaw right, yaw left, okay? So everything's going in the right direction. So now at this point, we can go into the forward programming. So we're gonna have the camera crew come over my right shoulder and we'll just try our best. Click, go into the function list. Scroll to forward programming, it's connecting. Gyro setting, other setting, gyro setting. First time setup, you have to do it. Make sure the model has been configured, including wing type, reversing travel, trimmed, etc., before continuing. So let's take a second before we continue and verify that all the control surfaces are lined up. Are they? Mechanically, this one's actually not. Let's show the people at home. You see this? Everything else looks very good. Mm -hmm. the that aileron looks pretty good. The flap looks good. The flap looks good. The aileron looks good. They're generally referring to the control surfaces, the main flight control surfaces. The rudder, or excuse me, the elevator, it's probably about as good as you get from visual. Okay, so I'm going to roll this O-ring back. I'm going to pop this open. I'm going to drop it down. Very good, very good clevis on this thing. We've had a few that broke off on, on us in the recent history, and that is super frustrating, guys. Like, really, really, really frustrating. If I had a dime for every time I needed a flat-bladed screwdriver and didn't have it, I'd be rich. But then if I had a dime for every time I needed one, or excuse me, that I didn't need one and had it, I'd be <laughs> extremely rich. Okay. So we're gonna need a flat bladed screwdriver to get that one out safely without gouging into the wing. Mm. So a flat bladed screwdriver, I'm just gonna come under here like this and then roll, okay? See how that popped out? So what I need to do on this one is I need to basically pull it toward me. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go in one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, or in other words, two turns, and I wanna make sure that's neutrally vertical so it doesn't apply a lot of side load on there. Okay, let's see how this looks. Too much, correct? I went too yep. much? Okay. a little bit. All right, so I need to come back out, I would say by a factor of one quarter. So let's go back one half of a turn, make sure it's straight up and down. I don't think I can get any better. Well. Let's try one and just see. It's easier to try now than it is to try later. Okay. I think we're splitting the difference there, so yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, so snap that. Then roll this little ring all the way up to the end. Everything looks good to me. All right, so now at this point, everything has been controlled. Uh, the controls have all been worked. So now I'm gonna click next. Is that tail in your way there? You can no. lean up against me to get closer if you want to be there. Okay. First time setup. You have to highlight next. Click next. Any wing type, channel assignment, sub trim, or server reversing changes require running through initial setup again. And that falls off the screen. Bug number four. Very small bug, definitely manageable. Okay, set the model level and press continue. Now, in this case, I don't have the gear down. I'm on a plane stand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna retract the gear or unretract the gear, and I'm gonna use the landing gear, okay? This is something you don't have to do. If you have a tricycle landing gear, you may actually find that it's better to put it on a plane stand for this step because then the plane will be tend, uh, tend to be flat. Okay, so now over my shoulder again, probably I'm guessing. <sighs> All right, so set the model level and press continue. So you have to select continue and then click. Now set the model on its nose and press continue. If the orientation on the next screen is wrong, go back and try again, okay? So I'm gonna highlight continue. 
and it's gonna be ready to click. Now this is where you need to be careful because if something goes wrong, you don't wanna get cut. I've never had it go wrong. When this is a huge model, this is not a very easy step. No, it's okay? not. So I'm clicking continue. It says standby and it's giving me an orientation here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna confirm that orientation. Okay, so now let's lay the plane down. So the plane is on its wheels. Let's open the canopy. And let's see if that looks the same. Does that look the same to you? That sure looks the same to me. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. So now we can go to continue. That's orientation number eight. And we've never had it not match like the first time we've done it. Yeah, it's always it's found It's always it. found it, correct. Okay, so, man, that thing's gonna roll easy. Okay, let's look at this now, camera crew. So now, I'm in the first time setup, the last screen, it says gain channel select and apply. So I'm gonna go to gain channel select and apply. So right now, I wanna set up switch D. See that? See how that switches like that? That's weird, right? That's normal. I don't want it on get, I don't want it on gear. I don't want it aux, aux one or aux two necessarily because right now it's, it's tied to some other behavior, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to change this to aux two, but aux two is currently tied to B. So we have to change that input to D. Okay. See how that works. Now we also probably need to go into another menu later and make sure that that unselected from being tied to the flaps or anything. Okay. All right, now we can go to apply. See how it double? It just danced once, okay? Receiver is rebooting, click for menu. Okay, now we'll go back into forward programming. We'll go to gyro settings. Now we can see the AS3X setup, okay? First time safe setup is, is the next thing that you would do. Let's see what we got here. So this is one of the one of the glitches we noticed on the NX6 so far is that this would sometimes scroll on some models. We did not see it on this model yet. So if you click and you change it, you can go to one times, you can go to point, see how it scrolls? See, you can get it to 0.5, you just have to do it quick. See, you can even go to point, point 0.25, see that? See what's going on guys? So that's just a glitch I noticed. But you, all you have to do is just scroll until you get it and click. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it right now. So like if you go to four times, that's crazy. I would start at one mm -hmm. and you may find that it's not enough to do your testing. So what I'll do is I'll go up to four times and then we'll go to the gains, okay? So these are populating the standard setup. Okay, so it says flight mode one. See how it's not changing? Because we haven't made an assignment. Oh, dang it, I didn't mean to go that far back. F mode, it's active, inhibited, or active, okay? Flight mode channel, see this is where we set it earlier and guess what, it's not set yet. I've noticed that before, okay? So let's go back and then let's go to the AS3X setup. Priority. The heading, use caution for yaw gain. Okay, that's weird. So I've never messed with that before. And the gyro sensitivity. sensitivity. Okay, so then there's another place where you can actually set the turn, turning it on and off. Relearn, orientation, gain channel, select. See, now it's set, okay? So you gotta go in there the first time or it doesn't ever do it, okay? Now watch this. Okay, so right now AS3X is probably on all the time, but you can set on, off, and then like you could set it to safe too, but you have to do the safe first time setup. So at this point, you can take the plane and you have to activate AS3X because right now it's off because we never applied throttle over 25%. So secure the plane safely. That's got a lot of power. Throttle cuts on. We're gonna wait for it to spin down. We're gonna test the throttle, okay? You see this? 
It's got a lot of gain. So when I move the tail that way, it should move that way. Moves that way, moves this way. Now watch the elevator. I'm gonna lift it off of its wheels. It's gonna go up when I lift the tail up. Up, now down. Now watch the aileron on the right side. Up, down. See how it's going up, then down. It's attempting to correct for environmental impact. Up, down. Left, right, okay? Up, down, okay? Does that make sense? Now watch this. See this, how it's moving? Listen. Less, off, less, more, less, off. Okay, now look what I'm doing. Whoops. Look what I'm doing, guys. I'm moving D. That's auxiliary two now. All the way on, less, off. That's how you save your plane's life. If the AS3X is too insane when you first start flying, you may need to switch it from all the way on to half, just to get it to the ground, to off, to get it to the ground, okay? So that's an important safety feature. And for that reason, I never set up safe on these things. The first time safe setup is gonna walk you through all the steps right on the screen, okay? So I'm not even gonna bother with it right now because I haven't done a maiden flight with this. So flaps, they're going the correct direction. Now look at this, guys. We never did address the elevator, but we did, see how it's going down? And then it's going down more. Now let's go into that menu and set that. So let's click back into the menu. Let's go back to flap system. Obviously 25 is a little bit aggressive. Oh, cause you just said that so we can actually see it. So you it. could see yep. it. So I'm gonna put this back to like, let's say 10 and let's do like 15. Let's, let's do 10 and 15, okay? Actually it's do 10 and 16. It always seems to be more on the initial and then a little bit more later, okay? Mm -hmm. So now look, you'll barely, you'll barely be able to see it. But it moves, and it moves a little bit more, okay? That's a pretty aggressive uh, landing flap, so we might actually go to 20, and then we'll go to 12, or 12, okay? So we'll do 12 and 20, we'll see how that works. That'll be our initial setting, and we can back it off from there if necessary, okay? Now also look at the monitor mode with me, guys. So here's monitor mode. You'll notice that AUX2 is not tied to that channel anymore because the forward programming took it for itself, okay? So now watch this. Now I'm gonna click, I'm gonna scroll back down to forward programming. I'm gonna wait for it to connect. And then I'm gonna jump into, it has to load, gyro settings. So this AS3X settings, priority heading and so on and so forth. See how it says four times? I'm gonna switch that back to one time and click quick so it stays. Okay, now I'm gonna walk back. Now watch this. I go all the way out to regular flight mode. Now listen, I don't know it's working. Barely. Okay, that's because one X is a lot less than four X. Mm -hmm. And a quarter X is a lot less than one X, okay? so. If you have a plane that oscillates badly, there's two ways to fix it. When the plane is flying along and it starts to oscillate in a porpoising fashion, then you have to reduce the gains of this channel, the elevator. If it yaws in a porpoise manner, which you generally won't see, then you have to adjust the rudder correction. And if it oscillates like this, then you have to adjust that setting. Okay, there's three different settings. Let's look at them. And this is the master gain, this being a seven channel setup. If you had, and this says it's six, but it's actually seven. If you had an 18 channel setup, you could have a switch for the yaw, you could have a, a, you know, a slider for the roll, you could have a slider for the elevator, and you could assign each of those independently. And you can do that on the fly while you're flying. On the fly, pun intended. Okay, so I'm gonna clear my timer because I don't wanna listen to it go off. So we're gonna go back down to the forward programming. Now, generally speaking, I don't screw with it because it's always about right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. don't ask me to send you my settings. Whatever I do in this is what the settings are. And when we do our first flight, we'll mention any changes we make. Then if we make a significant change for a second thoughts video, we'll mention it, okay? 
So let's go to gyro settings, other, other settings. So this is how you do all that other crap, okay? I'm not gonna do that. I just wanted to show you that there was a menu for that. So gyro. Okay, so now you can go, I can't remember if it's under here. System setup. Relearn orienting to gain channel select. So that's this thing, okay? See how it's inhibited? Now it's always set to, to yaw, or excuse me, it's set to aux too. You do have to go into that menu once or it won't work. And then the relearn. Okay, so that's not what we want. So we just want the AS3X settings. I have to relearn this myself every time, guys, because I forget. AS3X gains, priority heading. Obviously, this is like the master level. And then this changes from full to half to none, okay? Now let's look at AS3X gains. So flight mode one. See how it says zero, zero, zero. It's going to load 40, 50, 60. So if it, if it was porpoising like this, and as you, as you slowed down, it stopped doing it, then what you do is you would adjust this pitch from 50 down to like 45. And then the problem would likely disappear at full throttle. Okay. Now, if it's, if it resurfaced because you put in a bigger battery and it went faster, then you would back it off just a hair more. You always uh, make your adjustments at the maximum vehicle performance. Okay, so when you're going slow, you're gonna have less correction as a result of that. There is no exponential correction factor on these. You can probably do that, but I'm not gonna go through it here. It'd be too complicated um, and not necessary, generally speaking. So, meaning when you're coming in for a landing, you might want the stabilizer to be more um, excessive, okay? So like, the mode one X, you might want it to be two X when you're coming in for landing, but then you would have to have speed sensors and all sorts of things. It gets way sophisticated and we generally don't do that stuff on this. Okay. All right. So this is, this is where you would change your roll if it was, um, you know, jumping around on you. And then of course, this is where you do your yaw. Now watch this. See how it changes. Now you'll notice those numbers didn't change, did they? Mm -mm. Okay. But you'll notice when I move the plane, Watch this, listen. Nothing, something, very quiet. And then a little bit more, okay? But you're not seeing a change in those gains, right? I wonder if that's through priority. Nope. It might be. That's stick priority. Or a 5% battery. Fixed adjustable gains. See, adjustable. Now watch this, you can do fixed or you can do adjustable. Okay, I believe now you can also go into that and then watch what happens when you change your flight mode. You can change those to being fixed in one mode but not the other, okay? And then you can capture gyro gains after you've made adjustments. Okay, so without further ado guys, that's basically where we end up. We have the expo set, we have the flap set, we have the elevator to flap correction set, we have the timer set, we have the receiver mounted in the proper position, and we also went through what not to do at the beginning. We planned that out, of course. <laughs> and uh, we also have the CG worked out so that it's perfectly as prescribed by the manual, provided we didn't make a mistake. I'm assuming we didn't at this point, but you know we're not above making mistakes. Uh, this thing looks great. I'm really excited to see it fly. I know you guys have already seen it, but we haven't. It's gonna be gorgeous because I can already tell. Very striking plane. Check the link in the description. We'll link to not only the receiver, but the plane. We'll link to the batteries that we chose, both sizes, the 2700, and we'll go for the 3300 like we have in here, or 3200 rather, yeah. for us. Smart packs. If there's a Gen 2 available, we might go ahead and throw a link to that as well. Obviously, we'll link to the NX transmitters. By the time you guys see this, we might already have an NX8 going, but for now, the NX6 does everything you need to get this plane in the air. So I have no reason to believe that it's not a good transmitter for this choice. And what a beauty, guys. This thing is beautiful. It's very scale. It is exactly right up my alley. I can't wait to see it fly. We hope you guys will come back for more. We have so much content coming. We can hardly stand it. And then also, obviously, if you wanna help support us, definitely give us a like. If we've helped you in any way, please do like. It helps the YouTube algorithms to reach more audience so that you can help support us in that way. Also. Probably the biggest thing you can do is buy stuff from the links. 
if you were gonna buy it anyway, just buy it from the link. It doesn't cost you any more. You can use all your coupons and everything that you've got. Um, you just buy, follow the link, and then do it that way. And if you don't see something you want below, right at the top of the list, we have all the master links to Horizon Hobby or whatever it is you're going to. Just click that link and then whatever you pick, it'll, you know, we'll, we'll get a small uh, little pat on the back from Horizon, so. Anything else, camera crew? I think we're probably done. <laughs> I think we've covered everything. Yeah. This is kind of a long video, but we appreciate you guys sticking in there. We try not to cover our tracks. When we make a mistake, we want to admit it and then help you guys learn from our mistakes. Um, but honestly, when you're going through the process of doing this hobby, you're going to make some mistakes. So you might as well just learn to learn from the mistakes uh, because you're going to be a better RC pilot and you're going to be a better builder and you're going to be a, uh, you know, better at the technical stuff. And that's part of the reason why I always take you through radio setup. So thanks for watching, guys.